was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. The following is a presentation of the New England School of Communications at Hassan University. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I am no regular citizen. No, do you understand what you're witnessing? You cannot tell what the difference is. I want it all and I'm winning it. I do not care about opinions. Uh, time to make a few decisions. Do it so I can take your position. I'ma go get it, I'm punching and kicking. I keep on moving the yard for me. Just do it and stop what I'm talking to. I'm not expressing no modesty. I can't see nobody stopping me. In a part, on a partly cloudy Saturday afternoon in Bangor, it is opening weekend in the ranks of North Atlantic Conference softball, and today we feature the Hudson Eagles coming into the contest with a 10-6 overall record and the visiting Hornets of Northern Vermont University at Linden with a record of 5-7. Alongside Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow, Sam Tracy down on the sidelines today. Moons. Each of these teams have played a fair share of overall season games so far, but today, the bit of a reset is the opening weekend of conference play. What's the mindset of these teams coming into the day? Each team wants to get a quick win off the bat, be the first win in conference for each side. However, going into it, Hassan, they've been hitting the ball, pitching the ball really well. On Linden's side, they've been hitting home runs pretty decently throughout this season so far. And one of the big stories coming into today, last yesterday, uh, heavy rains coming in to the Bangor area. And for a report on field conditions, we send it down to the third member of our broadcast team, Sam. How's the field conditions down there? Thanks, fellas. A quick drive-by of O'Keefe Field yesterday would have saw a few puddles around the infield, but credit to the grounds crew here at Hussey University as they've managed to get this field in beautiful condition here. It's a great day for baseball, or excuse me, softball so far as game time temperature is around 56 degrees. All right, Sam, thank you very much for that. And keep an eye on the skies there this afternoon. And now, uh, Moons, we want to go, to, we want to go into our uh, player to watch first for the Hornets. Claudia Knapp, first year player from Howell, New Jersey, has been tearing it up at the plate for the Hornets today, uh, this season. Yeah, already 13 hits on the season. She's got four home runs out of 12 games played, 11 RBIs, 829 slugging percentage. She has been phenomenal. And of course, and of course, we want to go into, of course, the star, the been the leader behind the Eagles offense for the past season, Kenzie Dore. She has been not as fast as the star she has last season, but so far, especially after Wednesday, it's just been lightening things up. Oh, she quick picked things up quickly, already at now nine RBIs, notched a home run, another triple on her most recent appearance against St. Joe's. She's been one of the more key players on that roster. So, Eagles and the Hornets on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. And it will be coming to you live in just a few moments on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. On Thursday, April 28th, the electrifying, genre-smashing trio Take Three is coming to the Gracie Theater. Take Three, passionate, captivating arrangements from Beethoven to Bieber. You'll hear hits like Hallelujah, Unchained Melody, even Sweet Home Alabama. Take Three, April 28th at the Gracie. Tickets $15 to $25. Call 941-7888 or go to gracietheater.com.
right, and now at this time, we'd like to think, swing things over to public address announcer Becky Bubar to get things underway on this Saturday afternoon. Welcome to O'Key Field at Hudson University for today's doubleheader featuring, featuring the Northern Vermont University you, Linden Hornets and your Hudson University Eagles. Let's meet the starting lineup for today's contest. First for the visiting Linden Hornets. Leading off a junior from Morrisville, Vermont at second base number one, Amber Everett. Batting second, a freshman from Bethel, Vermont in center field number five, Blake Southworth. Betting third, a freshman from Summersville, Summersworth, New Hampshire, and at third base, number seven, Sierra Anderson. Betting fourth, a freshman from Howell, New Jersey, the catcher, number 24, Claudia Knapp. Betting fifth, a junior from St. Johnsbury, Vermont, at shortstop, number 15, Selena Porter. Betting sixth, a freshman from Derby, Vermont, at first base, number 25, Ryan Fortin. Batting seventh, a freshman from Levittown, New York, pitching number 19, Emily Anderson. Batting eighth, a freshman from St. Johnsbury, Vermont, in right field, number three, Caitlin Haggett. Batting ninth, a freshman from Linden, Vermont, in left field, number 16, Jordan Adams. Hornets are coached by Kevin Valentine. And now, the, for your Hudson University Eagles. Leading off a senior from Herman, Maine, at second base, number eight, Katie Windsor. Batting second, a sophomore from Holden, Maine, at third base, number 18, Mackenzie Dorr. Batting third, a senior from Madison, Maine, in center field, number four, Whitney Bess. Batting for the senior from Lewiston, Maine, the designated player, number 10, Megan Goslin. Batting fifth, a sophomore from Old Town, Maine, in left field, number five, Tegan Blackie. Batting six, a senior from Mount Vernon, Maine, catching number 12, Aaron Bonifant. Batting seventh, a senior from East Berry, Vermont, at shortstop, number 25, Madeline Fowler. Batting eighth, the junior from Old Town, Maine, on the mound, number 14, McKenna Smith. Batting ninth, the junior from Rochester, New Hampshire, in right field, number one, Katie Raymond. And the sophomore, Flex from Lyman, Maine, at first base, number 24, Julia Gregoire. Huston is under the direction of Diane Ramsey, assisted by Dr. Lee Speronis, Rick Roberts, and Jen Plord. This time, we ask that you please direct your attention to the flag as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. All fans in attendance are respectfully requested to please remove your hats. All right, and we are just about set and ready to go live from the Oak Key Field campus of Husson University. Once again, joined alongside by Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow. We're settled in and ready for a pair of North Atlantic Conference games, Eagles and the Hornets on this cloudy Saturday afternoon. Wind blowing out of dead center field. 
weather is something we're going to keep an eye on. And uh, now on the mound, we got McKenna Smith, the junior for the Eagles, a transfer from St. Anselm College out of Division Two, and McKenna Smith has just been lighting up, uh, lighting it up in the circle this season. Yeah, she comes in under a 1-0 ERA. She has been phenomenal. She's picked up right off the tracks where she came out of St. Anselm, arrived right here in Bangor, Maine, for Hudson University. She has been tearing it up. And now we'll take a look at the Hornets lineup. It'll be Amber Everett leading things off at second base for the Hornets. Blake Southworth in center field. Sierra Anderson at third. Claudia Knapp doing the catching duties today. Selena Porter playing shortstop. Ryan, um, Ryan Fortin at first base. Emily Anderson in the circle batting seventh. Caitlin Haggett out in right field batting eighth. And Jordan Adams playing left field batting ninth today for the Hornets as final thoughts being tossed around inside the circle of Husson. And we are just about set and ready to go from the O'Key field as getting set to lead things off is Amber Everett at second base. Everett is a junior from Mooresville, Vermont. 9 to 31, a double, six RBI, five walks, three strikeouts for a 290 average and 10 games played. First delivery from Smith in there for strike number one and we are underway on this Saturday afternoon. Smith picking right off where she left against St. Joe's Monks. Strikeout after strike. Smith had the sign from Bonifat, the 0-1. Swing on and missed for strike number one, two. And Everett quickly down 0-2 in the count. Smith coming off a 17 strikeout day back on Wednesday. In the game one start, the 0-2. Swing on and it's going to be a drop third strike, throw down to first. In time, and no, they're going to say Gregoire came off the bag. Yeah, that pass, that throw right there from Bonafont to Gregoire, just having to lift that stretch foot up, made it so Lyndon was able to get there in time. Congrats on Everett for digging that one out. So Everett reaches on the drop third strike. They got away from Bonafont. Now stepping in will be Blake Southworth, center fielder. Here's the first delivery from Smith. That one misses inside, ball one. You can already see, too, Smith being pretty cautious, realizing that McKenna Smith is more than capable of putting it in the flirting side of the strike zone. Why on a missed for strike number two to Southworth as the first pitch was called strike one. Southworth, eight of 30, a double, nine RBI, two walks, five strikeouts for a 267 average. No balls, two strikes, one on, nobody out for the Hornets, top of the first, the pitch. That one misses low. That one's in there. Strike number three on the low outside half. And that is strikeout number two for McKenna Smith in the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Sierra Anderson, third base for the Hornets this afternoon. 15 to 31. Five doubles, six RBI, five walks, six Ks as she swings and misses at the first offering from Smith. Watt was named North Atlanta Conference Rookie of the Week. The first weekly award for a Linden Hornet says 2014, the 0 one So why on a missed for strike number two. Smith, I mean, excuse me, Anderson too, loves those outside fastballs. Many of these hitters on the Linden team do. However, she typically, she's able to get a hold of one. She finds herself with five doubles on the season. The 0-2, swing on a missed for strike number three. And that's two up and two down for the Hornets. As that'll send in Claudia Knapp. We talked about her during pregame. 13 of 35, two doubles, four home runs, 11 RBI, three walks, five strikeouts for a 371 average. The first offering in there for strike number one to Knapp. Knapp doing the catching today for the Hornets. Smith back in, has her sign. The 0 1. Swan on a miss for strike number two. Nap to another hitter that loves those outside fastballs. We'll see if Smith's going to try and pitch those heaters on the inside to her. 0-2, oh, two, two out. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. And the throw down to first will be in time. And the side is retired. Four Ks for McKenna Smith in the top of the first. Three of them sit down, sit them down. We head to the bottom half of the first. You are watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do.
She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. We're really excited for our new School of Technology and Innovation to prepare students for the jobs that don't yet exist. There's a degree in integrated technology and an extended reality. And what's exciting about that is regardless of your perspective and your passion, there's space to explore that within our programs. Hassan cares about its students and Hassan cares about experiential learning and giving us those experiences to take into our future. Back live from the O'Keefe Field on the campus of Hudson University. Eagles softball playing host to the Hornets of Northern Vermont University at Linden, the North Atlantic Conference opener for this 2022 season. Alongside Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow. Sam Tracy down at field level on this cloudy Saturday afternoon. A little bit of a breeze blowing from left field to right field now. As warming up in the circle for the Hornets is Emily Anderson. Emily Anderson on the year, five appearances, all five are starts, one of three, four complete games, 25 innings pitched, 46 hits, 34 runs, 20 of those earned, 17 walks, eight strikeouts, a home run for 5.60 ERA, and she will face the top third of the Eagles lineup to get this one under, get the bottom of the first underway. Katie Windsor, Kenzie Dorr, Whitney Bess all do up as it'll be Windsor leading things off. 4-12, three RBI, a walk, a strikeout for 286 average in six games played so far this year. Here's the first offering from Anderson. That one misses high and away, ball one. Windsor starting off smart, realizing do not help these London Hornets by chasing outside the strike zone. Mage Anderson put it inside the box for. Anderson has a sign, sets the pitch. That one misses high, ball two to Windsor. Anderson is a first year from Levittown, New York. Making her first appearance against a powerhouse Eagles team, the 2-0. That one right down. That one misses low and inside. Ball number three to Katie Windsor. Windsor now, you can see she's given the green light from Ramsey. Swing on whatever she feels. Anderson, the 3-0. That one misses high, and Windsor trots the first on the leadoff walk. So staying patient at the plate. And the Eagles have their first base runner of the afternoon as that'll bring it up for Kenzie Dorr, batting second today. Dorr coming off a fantastic Wednesday against the St. Joseph's College Monks. Dorr, five RBI, a double, a triple, and a home run. As now, we're gonna have a timeout called as coach Kevin Valentine's gonna come out. Looks like she just want, he wants to just give his pitcher, a rosin bag. She's got it now. And we're ready to get it back underway. Door steps in for the first time today on the season. Went, um, Kenzie Door, 20 of 52, four doubles as she takes ball one high and away. Nine RBI, three walks, five strikeouts for a 385 average. She steps back in with a 1 0 count. One on, nobody out. Top, bottom of the first inning for the Eagles. The 1 0. That one's way on the line right into the glove on a grounder over to Porter. They go to second for one. First over to first, not in time. But the Hornets do get the lead runner at second in Katie Windsor, and that is one retired in this bottom of the first. Great stop right there from Porter, keeping her eyes on the ball, letting the glove hit the dirt, being able to get the clean play over to Everett to get out Windsor. That brings up the senior Whitney Best from Madison, Maine. 11 of 43, a double, three RBI, five walks, 13 strikeouts. Eight for eight on stolen bases. Here's the first offering in there for strike number one to Bess. That one kissed the top right of the strike zone. That was a great pitch right there from Anderson. 256 batting average for Bess this season. 340 on base percentage. No balls, a strike on the count. Here's the pitch. That one in the dirt, and the, even the count. Here's the throw down to first. Door back in plenty of time. Knapp getting a good stop right there. She's known for offensive prowess. However, preventing the pass ball right there. Best back in, waits for the pitch from Anderson. She has her sign from Knapp. The 1-1. One -one. High and away. Ball number two. 
Megan Goslin on deck for the Eagles. Designated player today in the four spot. Best back in the 2 1. That one misses high for, that one misses high, ball number three. It'll be a hitter's count for Whitney Bass. One on, one out for the Eagles, bottom of the first, looking to strike first blood. They scored the first runs of the game in both games last Wednesday against the Monks. The 3 1. Swing on to pop foul right side out of play. And it loads the count, three balls and two strikes. Bess now gonna, excuse me, Bess now gonna have to choke up a little on the bat here. See if she's able to advance door on this. Three balls, two strikes, one on, one out. Bottom of the first. Here's the 3 2. That one misses outside, and Whitney Bess will chop the first. Drawing the walk on the full count. And that puts two on with one out in this bottom half of the first for Megan Goslin. Goslin, a senior from Lewiston, Maine, 10 of 38, two doubles, a triple, four RBI, a walk, four strikeouts for a 263 batting average. Anderson in, dealing with a little bit of trouble early on. Here's the first offering. Goslin sends this one in the left field, and that one's down for a base hit. Door is going to score on the play. The throw down to home, not in time. Best tries for third. She's there. Goslin ends up at second, and it's an RBI for Megan Goslin and the Eagles. They take a 1-0 lead in this bottom half of the first. You can see the communication between Ramsey and Dora right off the bat. The second that comes off of Bess, you see Dora trucking right towards home, right as Bess crosses first base. She realizes, hey, that's another RBI into the tally. Giving an RBI single for Goslin for now. That scores Dora all the way from second, and in steps Tegan Blackie. Sophomore from Old Town, Maine, 7 to 33, two doubles as she takes strike number one. Seven, R seven strikeouts, one for one on stolen bases for a 212 average. Blackie playing in left field today for the Eagles. 0 1 count for Blackie with a 1 0 lead. Here's the pitch. That's why on, and this one's lined right into the glove of Sierra Anderson. Dive back to third in time, and the Hornets double up the Eagles to retire the side. Eagles plate one. Eagles plate one in this bottom half of the first. They have a one nothing lead. We head to the top half of the second. You are watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Tech careers start here. Extended reality. Integrated technology computer information systems, software development, web design and development. Learn to create innovative solutions with cutting edge technology at Husson University. Stand is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Top of the second inning from O'Keefe Field on the campus of Husson University. Eagles softball with a 1-0 lead over the Hornets of Northern Vermont University at Linden. After an RBI single from Megan Goslin scores Kenzie Dorr from second base. It'll be the 5-6-7 batters due up this top of the second for the Hornets as they're going to see a second inning of McKenna Smith who struck out the side in the top of the first. Selena Porter stepping in and she swings and grounds this one foul down the left field line. Smith got a lucky break right there. Porter almost able to hug that third baseline. However, just a hair too much to the left. Selena Porter with a good diving stop at the shortstop position to get the lead out for the first out of that bottom of the first. It'll be Ryan Fortin, Emily Anderson all do up as well this inning. Anderson too, that heads up play at third. The 0 one swung on a missed for strike number two to Porter. Kenna Smith make, looking to make quick work of this Hornets lineup in this bottom half of the second. Here's the 0-2. 
So I on, and this one's pop foul left side. And Dorn makes the grab into the net on the left side of the infield. A great catch there from Kenzie Dorn. Great awareness as well. And that retires Selena Porter. That's one gun in this top of the second. And the tracking from Dora being able to make sure she doesn't run into her own dugout, but also keeping herself in play to get that out. Phenomenal. Made the catch, made contact with the netting. As now stepping in will be Ryan Fortin. The first pitch, Swayana missed, strike one. Kenneth Smith still dealing in the circle for the Eagles. As expected, transfer from St. Anselm. Division two, here's the 0-1. So on the line foul right side on top of the roof of the Linden dugout as it rolls off the back of the roof, that'll be 0-2. Smith is a tricky pitcher to hit against. She loves flirting with the outside of the strike zone and typically that ball will dip right before it hits the plate. Here's the 0-2, so on a miss for strike number three and that's two gone in this top half of the second. McKenna Smith is a three-time winner of North Atlanta Conference Pitcher of the Week this season. Was also named to the 2021 Northeast 10 All-Conference third team as a member of St. Anselm. Is now stepping in will be Emily Anderson trying to help her own cause. First pitch, swing on a missed, strike one. Anderson back in. Going up against Smith, pitcher versus pitcher. Here's the old one. That one gets the outside half, strike two. Anderson on that one's got to be swinging on those on the outside, the, right on the outside part of the strike zone. Perfect opportunity to hit the barrel of the bat on that one. Here's the 0-2 from Smith. Right down the middle, strike three, and that retires the side. Three up and three down for the Hornets. We head to the bottom half of the second. Eagles up one to nothing. You're watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Thank you. Thank you. Hustle University, preparing students for professional careers in business, criminal justice, health, technology, and communications since 1898. Hustle edu. Back here from the Oakey Field on the campus of Husson University with the Eagles leading 1-0, getting ready to bat in this bottom half of the second inning. Alongside Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow, Sam Tracy down on field level this afternoon for game number one of two on this cloudy Saturday afternoon as it'll be Emily Anderson getting ready for her second inning of work. Had a bit of a mess to clean, had a little bit of a mess to get to deal with in the bottom half of the first, but managed to get out of it only one run allowed as she will face the heart of this Eagles lineup. It'll be the six, seven, eight hitters due up. It'll be lead, led off by Aaron Bonifant, senior doing the catching for game number one. Bonifant on the year, one of six, two RBI for a buck 67 average, 280, 286 on base percentage in four games played so far in this season. She steps in, Anderson has her sign. Here's the first offering. That one misses high and away, ball one to Bonifant. Bonifant, longtime catcher on this Eagle squad. Four-year member. Anderson back in, the 1-0. That one inside and low for ball number two. Anderson having a hard time putting it on that outside part of the strike zone. You can tell she's going for the top right, top left, whatever. Just getting two outside of it. Here's the 2-0 from Anderson. This one's swung on the looped in the right center field and down for a base hit. Bonifant takes a turn. She'll stop at first. And the Eagles put their lead, put the lead off batter on with a single to right center field from Aaron Bonifant. That one was a little high, but Bonifant clearly liked that one. Took a slug at it. Finds herself now at first base. Bonifant, Bonifant records only her second base hit of the season as in steps Madeline Fowler, longtime shortstop for the squad, also a senior. 
Fowler on the year. 10 of 45 with a double as she swings and pops this one into center field. Having to go back for that one is Southworth, and she can't make the grab in center field. Heading to second base is Aaron Bonifant. Fowler is on, and the Eagles have two on with nobody out in this bottom half of the second inning. That's a ball. Miscommunication right there between Southworth and Haggett. Just not, com uh, not communicating with one another, almost running into each other, making it an error for them. However, Fowler, you could see the look of relief when she saw the ball drop. She sits at first with pleasure. It'll be an E8 on the play. So two on, nobody out as McKenna Smith steps in, trying to help out her own cause. Here's the first offering. High and away, ball one to Smith. McKenna Smith at the plate this season. 6 of 38, a double, two RBI, two walks, 12 strikeouts for a buck 58 average. Looking to help out her own cause. Once again, here's the 1-0. Toy on, and this one's popped up. High in the infield, ranging over is Anderson, and she can't make the grab, but the throw over, throw over to third as the infield fly rule was in effect with two on, so that'll be out number one. Anderson couldn't make the grab over there. Looked like two hitting the palm of the hand. It is always a sore one if you're not able to catch those pop flies and the netting. So you can see her trying to shake it off. As in will step Katie Raymond, batting in the nine spot, playing right field today. Raymond. As she will take strike number one on the outside half. Raymond, 10 of 42, a home run, three RBI, seven walks, 12 strikeouts for a 238 average. Junior from Rochester, New Hampshire. Comes to the plate, two on, one out, bottom of the second. The 0 one. That one misses inside and high. And the count is even at a ball and a strike. Anderson going for the inside top part of the zone. Just a little too wild with it on that one. So a ball and a strike, one gone, two on for the Eagles. Here's the pitch. Swung and fouled back to the screen. And Raymond now in a one-two hole. Good look from Raymond, though. She had the barrel of the bat right on it, just a little too low. She's able to hit that right there. That ball could potentially bring in a scoring run. So a ball and two strikes on the count. One gone, two on for the Eagles. Bottom of the second inning. Anderson has her sign. One, two. That one misses high, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. You can see Bonifant on second. She is eager to advance to third. Every time that pitch is hitting the mitts of Knapp, she is almost running. Anderson, here's the 2-2, swing on, and this one's popped foul down the left field line and out of play. So Raymond staying alive. Count still at 2-2. Two and two. Katie Windsor on deck. If the inning were to continue. Anderson has her sign sets, the 2-2. Two -two. Swing on and grounded right side over to Everett. Flick over to second for one. They can't get it. As this one, as Ken dragging it down, they're going to try to send the runner. Here's the throw down to home. And it is well in time. Bonifant throwing down at home. Raymond's going to end up at second. And Fowler will end up down at third. But that is too retired in this bottom half of the second. A great dig out right there over at first from Raymond. Not giving up on the play. However, Bonifant getting a little too eager. Gets the easy out. Nap. Great tag. Great rebuttal from that first air. So Bonifaz thrown out four to two on the play for the second out of the inning as stepping in will be Katie Windsor for the second time today as she takes ball number one high and away. So Bonifaz thrown out trying for home. Fowler ends up down at third and Raymond advances to second on, on, play, on the play. So two on, two out. The 1-0. That one misses outside, ball two. Kenzie Dorr. Lurking on deck if the inning were to continue, and she has become known to be very dangerous in situations such as these. There's the 2-0. That one inside half of the zone, strike one. Looking back a couple games ago, too, when she hit that home run against the Monks, Windsor was on second. She put her fingers around knowing what was already going to happen. So two balls, one strike. Here's the delivery from Anderson. Swung on, and this one's lined in the left center field and down for a base hit. Fowler scores. Raymond's going to score, and it's a two-RBI single from Katie Windsor, and it's a 3 nothing lead for the Eagles. Katie Windsor now adding herself five RBIs on the season along with her fifth hit. She's proven that when she's able to get a hold of the ball, she will send that out into shallow left or shallow right. Belt high, belt high pitch just outside. 
She got a hold of it, sent it out to left center. And it's a two RBI single for Katie Windsor. And the Eagles have themselves a three nothing lead as Kenzie Dorr steps in for the second time today. She reached out a fielder's choice and eventually scored back in the first. Here's the first offering. That one misses high, ball one to Dorr. It's always difficult pitching to a hitter like Kenzie Dorr. Kenzie Dorr comes in, she's got a 385 average, that's 635 slugging. Here's the one over Anderson, swung on a miss, strike one, and the count is even. You can tell Dora wishes she got that pitch back right down the middle, just two underneath it. So ball and a strike on the count, one on first for the Eagles, two gone with a three nothing lead. Anderson has her sign, here's the one one. Swing on and grounded foul down the left field line and a good stop made by head coach Diane Ramsey. She shows she's always active. We were talking about it in the pregame. She is always doing something. Ramsey in her fourth season as at the helm of the Eagles. Also coaches field hockey in the fall. Ball and two strikes on the count for Door. Here's the pitch. Swing on and this one's popped up middle infield. Coming under it is Sierra Anderson. She makes the grab and the side is retired. Eagles plate two on an RBI single from Katie Windsor. They have a three nothing lead. And we head to the top half of the third inning. You are watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. I don't remember how it started. Not today. Oh boy. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Choosing a school is really difficult, but I have never felt like I should have gone somewhere else. The thing about I like about the school, the class sizes are smaller. Making friends is easier here because of the fact that you are such a tight-knit community. I was shooting around the basketball. That's how I met my first friend. You meet a lot of new people from different areas of the world. I feel like I've grown so much here. And there's so many amazing people that work here to learn from. I definitely made the right decision coming to Hassan. Top half of the third inning on the top half of the third inning on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Alongside Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow. Eagles softball leads the Linden Hornets 3-0 through three innings. Two plated in the bottom half of the second on a two RBI single from Katie Windsor as getting ready to lead things off would be Caitlin Haggett bagging in the nine spot for the Hornets. Taking on McKenna Smith as she shows bunt and fouls it back to the screen. And that'll be a 1-0-1 count on for Caitlin Haggett. It'll be Amber Everett, Blake Southworth also do up in this top of the half, top half of the third. Haggett hasn't got a hit on the year yet, but she does have a 400 on base percentage. Haggett swings and misses at the second offering from McKenna Smith, and she's quickly down 0-2. Smith so far today, six strikeouts. On the day so far, leave pick it up right where she left off. The 0-2 swing on a miss, strike number three. Make that seven strikeouts on the day for McKenna Smith. As it'll be Jordan Adams stepping in. She's batting in the nine. Excuse me, Caitlin Haggett was in the eight spot. Here's the first offering to Adams. She shows bunt and pops it back to the screen. And that'll be strike number one. Man, that was a rocket from McKenna Smith. That would be difficult to be the bunter on the other end of that. Linden struggling to get any sort of offense going against that powerful arm in McKenna Smith. Struggling to find a hit so far today. Here's the 0-1. Adam shows bunts again, and she can't get, make contact. And she offers around, and that'll be 0-2 on the count for Adams, playing left field today for the Hornets. I get in a swing or ball type situation here. The 0-2. Swing on a miss for strike number three. And strikeout number eight on the day for McKenna Smith. Smith's so good at being able to fool opponents at the plate. Hit you with a couple strikes down the middle and throw a little bit less heat and put it up out of the zone. Amber Everett now comes to the plate for the second time today in the one spot playing second base. She reached on a drop third strike, representing the only base runner 
that Linden has had so far today. She swings and misses at strike one. The Everett, Blake Southworth on deck if the inning were to continue. Smith has her sign, sets the 0-1. That one misses low, ball number one, and the count is even and a ball to strike. Every time Smith pitches, you watch. It's like a massive mind game. One heater right down the middle, the next is a curve in the outside. 1-1, one, one, swing on a miss, strike two. McKenna Smith, the strike away from sending him down, one, two, three. Linden still looking for their first hit of the day. Top of the third, two gone, nobody on base. The one, two, that one misses high and in. And the count is even at two and two. That one got a little bit away from Smith. We've seen it sometimes, loses grip on that. You can see she was had to use that rosin bag a little extra at some points going up against the Monks. Smith quickly has her sign. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Swing on a miss, strike three, and the side is retired. Three up and three down. McKenna Smith with strikeout number with strikeout number nine on the day. We head to the bottom half of the third. You are watching Hudson Eagles Softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. On Thursday, April 28th, the electrifying, genre-smashing trio Take Three is coming to the Gracie Theater. Take Three, passionate, captivating arrangements from Beethoven to Bieber. You'll hear hits like Hallelujah, Unchained Melody, even Sweet Home Alabama. Take Three, April 28th at the Gracie. Tickets $15 to $25. Call 941-7888 or go to gracietheater.com. Well, earlier today, Hudson Eagles softball seniors were honored pregame earlier on this afternoon for their hard work and dedication to the program the past four years. Whitney Bess, Katie Windsor, Megan Goslin, Aaron Bonifant, and Madeline Fowler all recognized pregame for their for their contributions to the senior program. Back here from O'Keefe Field on the campus of Hudson University, alongside Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow, Sam Tracy. Down at field level this afternoon, Eagles with a three nothing lead. As Whitney Best steps in for the first for the second time today, she walked and was forced out at fifth on the line out as she takes strike number one from Sierra Anderson still on the mound. It's still in the circle for the Hornets in game number one. 0 one count, nobody on, nobody out. Here's the 0-1. Swing on, and this one's lifted pretty well out to left field, but it's going to fall foul down towards the corner. So it'll be a long strike number two for Whitney Bess. Ooh, that one would have made some distance. Covered some ground all the way almost to the warning track. However, one thing from Bess, she is able to hit it that far and not by coincidence, she is the second lead hitter on this team. So Bess steps back in. No balls, two strikes on the count. Here's the 0-2. That one misses inside. For the first ball, ball in two strikes. As Best sends this one out to left field, ranging under it is Jordan Adams. She's got the grab, and Best is retired for one gone in this bottom half of the third. Routine out right there from Adams. Great job by not being lackluster, keeping the errors to a minimal, getting the easy out. Megan Goslin steps in for the second time today, had the RBI single back in the first inning to get the scoring going for the Eagles. First offering from Anderson in there for strike number one. As we're gonna send it down to Sam Tracy, who's got a report from field level, Sam? Yes, fellas, we've got action in the Eagles bullpen. It's number 21, Tatiana Biambi, the first year out of Gorham. So Biambi, we'll keep an eye out for that. She's had five appearances on the year as it'll be a 1-1 count for Megan Goslin, designated player today. Here's the 1-1. Swayon, and this one's lined in the left center field, and that's down for a base hit. 
Having to pick that one up is Adams. Trying to get it in the second to the throw, not in time. And it's a sliding double from Megan Goslin with one gone in this bottom half of the third. Goslin had to get up on her horse, rounding first. However, when she had her eyes on second, she realized she was locked and loaded, able to get the slide, tags that inside of the bag, marks herself safe, avoiding the tag from Porter. So in will step Tegan Blackie, who lined into a double play to end the first inning. Steps in for the second time today. Left fielder, sophomore from Old Town, Maine. The first offering from Anderson. Swing on the line, fouled on the left field line. Man, that left field has been popular this inning. You've had Goslin, you've had Bass. Quite a few people trying to make their way over there. So it'll be an 0-1 count for Tegan Blackie. One gone in this bottom half of the third. Megan Goslin on second after the one-out double. Blackie back in. Anderson sets the 0-1 inside to even the count. Goslin try, tried to at first, looked like she wanted to get a hold of it, but the second she realized that was coming close, she was going out. So Anderson back in again, has her sign. Here's the 1-1 in there for strike number two, gets the high inside half. Anderson really liking that inside part of the strike zone. Blackie looking to keep the inning going, Eagles Trying to extend their 3-0 lead. Here's the 1-2. It's way on and grounded left side and through for a base hit. Picked up by Adams. Goslin stops at third base. But Lyndon bats the ball around. They're going to send Goslin now, and she's going to score. As a little miscommunication there between Adams and Porter. It might have been Porter who bobbled it and actually kicked it across the infield. And it's a 4-0 lead for the Eagles. Goslin didn't know what decision to make at first. However, Lyndon made the decision for. She decided to go all the way home. So Goslin advances the third on the uh, on the single from Blackie and scores on what I believe is going to be scored in E6. So still one out, one on for the Eagles now with a 4-0 lead as Aaron Bonifant steps in. She singled and was singled the last time up and was eventually thrown out. She shows bunt. Here's the throw down to second, not in time. Tegan Blackie has herself a stolen base. It's a lack of discipline right there from Porter and Everett. Not one of them was on top of the bag. When Knapp was ready to fire down a second, no one was there. So that was strike number one. I believe they're going to rule Bonifant offered on the bunt attempt. So it'll be an 0-1 count. Still only one gone in this bottom half of the third. Eagles looking to extend their lead once again. Here's the pitch. That one misses high. And the count is even at a ball and a strike. Bonifant. Keeping the head smart, not swinging at things that are above or below the strike zone, keeping it just where she wants it. Bonifant back in, a ball and a strike on the count. Here's the offering from Anderson. That one bounced in the dirt. Ball number two. Knapp's done a great job at keeping the ball in front of her today. She's had a couple of wild pitches that she stopped, been able to prevent any pass balls. So Anderson back. Waiting for her side, two balls on a strike on the count. The pitch, so I on and fouled back to the screen. And it evens the count, two and two on Aaron Bonifant. On deck for the Eagles, Madeline Fowler. Who reached on an air in center field and eventually scored on the two RBI single back in the second inning. Here's the two, two from Anderson. Swung on and grounded foul left side. Bonifant stays alive for the 2-2 count. Anderson has really tried sticking with that inside part of the plate with every batter. She has struggled on trying to place that ball on the outside of the strike zone. So Bonifant back in, 2-2 two and two on the count, one gone. Runner on second for the Eagles, bottom of the fourth. This pitch, this one swung on and lifted pretty well out to right, right field. Back for it is Fortin, she can't make the grab. A run is going to score on the play, and it'll be a two-base error for Aaron Bonifant that brings home a run in this bottom half of the third, and the Eagles now lead it five to nothing. Yeah, tough break out in right field right there. Tried to be able to get a glove on that, however, Haggett just was not able to control it. Looked like she had a diving grab for a second, but momentum got the best of her. So, my apologies, no run scored on the play. I misread a a base runner, so that puts two on with one gone in this bottom half of the third. Fowler steps in for the second time today. 
First offering swung on, and this one's popped up. Left side and just shy of the stands. Out of play, that'll be long strike number one on Fowler. Eagles threatening to add, tally some runs. Some more runs in this bottom half of the third. They've plated one so far this inning, still only one gone. On a few, a couple of fielding errors from Linden. Fowler back in with an 0-1 count. Here's the offering from Anderson. That one misses low. And the count is even on a ball and a strike. Anderson's got to be disciplined right here. If she's able to get Fowler out, it's going to give Linden some momentum towards the way. Anderson back in, the 1-1. That one misses high and away. Two balls and a strike on the count for Madeline Fowler. Senior, long time shortstop for this Eagles squad. Anderson back in, has her sign. The 2 1. It's why on, and this one's lifted pretty well at the left field. Under it is Adams. And she makes the grab. Tagging up on the play is Tegan Blackie, and she is going to score on the sacrifice fly from Madeline Fowler, and it makes it a 5 0 lead for this Eagles team. Heads up play from Blackie, realizing that, hey, this ball's likely to be caught by Adams. Waits for the go signal from Diane Ramsey. Fires Blackie all the way to home. That's two scored in this bottom half of the third. It's a 5 0 lead for Husson as McKenna Smith steps in for the second time today. She popped up to third base on an infield fly last time up. There's the first offering. Misses inside, ball one. McKenna Smith for, with another chance to help her own cause. Has been lights out in the circle so far today through three innings. Nine strikeouts. Here's the 1-0. This point on and grounded left side into the glove of Porter. She throws on the first, and it is in time, and the side is retired. The Eagles plate two in this top in this bottom half of the third. We head to the top half of the fourth. Linden coming up. You're watching Huston Eagles softball on the Huston Eagles Sports Network. about playing two sports is probably having two families. The softball team is very different, I think, than a lot of the other teams at Husson, and it's very special. We have an insane group of freshmen that came in. They really just fit very well in the group, and I think that the whole team as a whole is just gonna do great things this year. We definitely compete. I think that's one of the great things, though, that like for me and Tegan, we can like connect over playing two sports and then also push each other more, especially in softball because we are going for like a very similar position. I think definitely you have to be able to keep an open mind going in and understand that they are two completely different teams because you're gonna experience highs and lows in both. You might be in a high with one and a really down low in the other sport and you have to be able to separate the two, but also focus on your schoolwork because that's definitely the most important. So it is hard to balance, but if you really want it, you have to want it and you can do it. And of course, two sport athletes. Uh, not moves, not very, not the rarest thing in the world, especially at the D3 level, but something you don't see very often. And it's uh, and for two and for a couple of two sport athletes on this softball team, success is um, being successful is something they are very accustomed to. Of course, Tegan Blackie just coming off that uh, North Atlanta, the, um, the conference championship with the field hockey team. And of course, has been a member of this softball team for a couple of years as well. So uh, something not uncommon, but something that uh, definitely really cool to see, especially at this level. Oh, of course. And the most impressive part is the balance of the academic side of things. You watch those, you watch the both of them whenever they're on a bus, whenever they're have some downtime. They're always cranking out homework in between those practices. All right, back here from O'Keefe Field, we have a pitching change in the circle. That is going to be an early day for McKenna Smith, who has been lights out so far today. They're going to go to the first year player in Tatiana Biambi from Gorham, Maine, in her five appearances on the mount in the circle this season. She's got four starts. She's one and four, two complete games, 22.2 innings pitched, 31 hits, 19 runs, 14 of those earned, 14 walks, eight strikeouts, three home runs for a 4.32 ERA. And she's going to face the two, three, four hitters in this Linden lineup in her first appearance on this Saturday afternoon. Here's the first offering. In there, strike number one to Blake Southworth who struck out looking back in the first. Sierra Anderson, Claudia Knapp all do up the sitting as well. 
Back into Southworth. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed for strike number two. Southward got to be a little more disciplined. That one was high right, top of the zone. Ended up fighting for the, falling for the bait. Chopped off for the strike. So beyond Biazer sign sets the 0-2. Swung on and missed for strike number three. And just like McKenna Smith, Tatiana Biambi coming in here and throwing the gas as well. So no shortage of gas being thrown, especially on this Eagle squad. You can hear just from, we're about 50 feet away from the plate. You can hear the mitts from Bonifant on every catch on these. Sierra Anderson back in now. First offerings high and inside, ball one. She struck out swinging back in the first inning. I'm gonna say that quite a bit as we go back through this Linden batting order. Here's the second offering, swung on a miss, strike one. Count is even. As McKenna Smith left the game, nine strikeouts on the day of no hit ball. Only one base runner so far for Linden. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swing on and foul left side into the screen. And it's a 1-2 count. Yombi is going to have to be pretty careful right here. Anderson on the most hits on the team. She is very powerful when she's able to get that ball behind the plate. Anderson back in. Yombi back on the rubber. Waits for her sign. Has it. Here's the 1-2. That one misses high. And the count is even. Two balls, two strikes. Anderson being patient, not falling for the chopper, one's down in the dirt, making Biambi have to throw it to her in the zone. Biambi has her sign, there's the 2-2. Two -two. That one in there on the outside half, strike three to Anderson. And that is two up and two down for the Hornets on back-to-back -back strikeouts. As coming up will be Claudia Knapp, who struck out swinging back in the first inning. Yombe left Anderson having to guess right there, put it right on the outside of the zone. Anderson forced to get struck. We're gonna send it down to Sam Tracy. And of course, that was a big story this past week. Jen Jones making her return to the lineup. Didn't Was not originally on this squad to start the year. Coming back for her second graduate season as the Next offering to Knapp is high for ball number two. So 2-0 on the count for Knapp. Yami has her sign. The 2-0. So on, and this one's popped up right side. Under it is Windsor. She makes the grab, and that retires the side. Three up and three down for the Hornets. Eagles over with a 5 nothing lead. Be ended the bottom half of the fourth. You're watching Hudson Eagles Softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watcha! Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? Well, now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Hudson University, preparing students for professional careers in business, criminal justice, health, technology, and communications since 1898. Hudson.edu. Back here from O'Keefe Field on the campus of Hudson University, bottom half of the fourth inning as the Eagles get ready to come back up to bat with a 5-0 lead. Sierra a Emily Anderson back in the circle for her fourth inning of work for this Hornets team. As it'll be Katie Raymond, Katie Windsor, Kenzie Dore all do up this inning for the Eagles. Katie Raymond reached on a fielder's choice back in the second inning and eventually scored on a two RBI single from Katie Windsor. Coach Diane Ramsey in her fourth season 
at the helm of this Eagle squad has led them to three consecutive North Atlantic Conference Championships 2019, 2018, 2019, 2021. Of course, no season in 2020. As Raymond steps in, Anderson waits for a sign. Here's the first offering. That one over Raymond's head. That'll be ball number one. Talk about a lineup you've got to go through. Raymond, Windsor, and Dorr. Whew, those are some heavy hitters. So Anderson back in, looks. The 1-0. This one's swung on and grounded right side. Diving play made by Everett. She's up, throws on to first in time on a good play from from Amber Everett on the, made the made that throw on the ground as well, and that is one retired in this bottom half of the fourth. That throw from Everett, along with the stretch from Fortin, just all around great teamwork right there from Linden. Get it. Katie Windsor up the bat now, one of one with a walk on the day as she had like her last time up a two RBI single. As we're going to send things down to Sam Tracy from field level. Yeah, last half inning, we had some action in the Eagles' bullpen. The return of uh, the recently returned Jen Jones warming up in the bullpen for the Eagles. Of course, Jen Jones joins the team in her second year with graduate eligibility. Help lead the Eagles to an appearance in the NCAA Regionals last year. That was on this field. Was named NCAA Regional Player of the Tournament as... It'll be a 3-0 count for Katie Windsor on three straight pitches from Anderson. Unusual pass ball right there from Knapp. She's done a pretty good job at containing these wild pitches today. So Anderson in, waits for her sign. One gone in this bottom half of the fourth. Here's the 3-0. Gets the outside half, strike one to Katie Windsor. It'll be Kenzie Dorr on deck. Anderson waits for her sign. Here's the 3-1. That one inside, ball number four to Windsor. And Windsor reaches for the third time today on her second walk. As that brings up Kenzie Dorr, who so far today, Moons, is due for a hit. Reached on a field of choice and scored back in the first and popped up the third base her last time up in the second. She's been making contact. She's just had a hard time putting on the distance behind it. So door back in, here's the first offering from Anderson. That one outside and nearly got away from Knapp. Did a good job to keep that one in front of her. It'll be ball number one to door. Windsor wasn't expecting that grab from Knapp. Snow coned it, Knapp instant, I mean, Windsor instantly had to turn around and back pedal right to first. Here's the one 0 from Anderson. Swing on a miss, strike one. That was a good pitch right there from Anderson. Door just got a little too underneath it. So Kenzie Dorr back in with a 1-1 count. One gone, one on base for Husson. With a 5-0 lead, bottom of the fourth inning. Here's the pitch. This one's way on the line. That one just gets by Anderson over at Anderson and it scoots into shallow left field. And that'll go down as an infield hit for Kenzie Dorr. That puts two on with one out with this bottom of the fourth. Tell you what, that was a rocket. You could hear that bat hit all the way from Utah all the way. Anderson wasn't able to get her hand quite on it. Got a glove. Just such a powerful hit when it's coming off the bat from Kenzie Dorr. Stepping in now, Whitney Bess. 0 for 1 with a walk today. Walked back in the first, flew out to left field in the third. Here's the first offering. She shows bunt, pulls back. It'll be ball number one, just misses outside. Two on, one out, bottom of the fourth. Eagles threatening to score once again. They've scored in every single inning so far today. Two in two runs, needs the second and third, and a run in the first. Here's the 1-0 from Anderson. That one misses high and away again. 2-0 for Whitney Bess. Bess being very, very patient here, waiting for the right pitch that she wants. Katie Windsor on first, Kenzie Dorr on second. Here is the 2-0, swung on and grounded foul left side. It's a 2-1 count. Megan Goslin on deck. She's had a great day so far today. Will be up for her third time. If, if Bess could keep the inning going. Here's the 2-1 from Anderson. That one misses high and it's a hitter's count for Whitney Bess. Bess being very patient. That one just trickling into the strike zone at the last second. 
Three balls and a strike. One gone, two on base for Husson. Looking to put up more runs in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the 3-2. That one gets the outside half, strike two, and the count is full. Three ben. balls and two strikes for Whitney Bess. Bess been in this position many times. One of the more advocating seniors on this roster. Here's the 3-2. That one swung on and grounded foul down the left field line. And Bess stays alive. Good fight right there. Even though it was a little bit inside, not taking the chances of it having been an inside strike. So Bess steps back in. Three balls and two strikes on the count. One out, two on for the Eagles. Bottom of the fourth. Here's the 3 2. Swan and Lott grounded left side, fielded by Porter. She throws on the third for the force out. And that's all the Hornets will get. But a good heads up play from Selena Porter. And that's two retired in this bottom of the fourth. You said it right, right there, Ethan. Good heads up play. Looking for the most advancing runner, not forcing anything. Taking it where they can get it from. So Dorr advances the second on the field of choice. Wendy Best is on first on the field of choice. So that brings up Megan Goslin, two for two today with a double. And she sends this one pretty well at the left field, going back forward as Adams is over her head. It lands on the warning track. One run scores. Here comes Whitney Best from first. And it's a two RBI double for Megan Goslin. Have herself a day with her third base hit, and it's a 7 nothing lead that for one, the Eagles. That one pitch right down the middle. Goslin's eyes just lit up like stars. She belted that one all the way. Adams tried to get a leap to be able to contest it. Over just too high up for her. That scores Door from second and Bess all the way from first. As coming up is Tegan Blackie for the second time today. She lined into a double play in the first. Single that eventually scored back in the third inning. Here's the first offering. This is low and inside. Ball one to Blackie. Tegan Blackie too. She's great from behind the plate. However, she is one of the leading stealers on this team. Megan Goslin now. Two doubles and a single for three RBI on the day. Here's the 1 0, swung on and fouled back to the left side. 1 1 count for Tegan Blackie. Aaron Bonifant on deck would bat next if the inning were to continue. Blackie back in. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Outside half, strike two called for Tegan Blackie. Rising take right there from Blackie. Typically, she loves those outside, outside zone pitches. So Anderson back in, looking. Here's the 1-2. That one just misses high and away for, to even the count. Two balls and two strikes. 1 more run would put the Eagles up 8, which would put Linden down to their final three outs in the top of the fifth. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and lifted pretty well. Left field foul. Almost reaching the parking lot right there on that one. <laughs> Lands about three feet away from the parking lot off to the left side. So Blackie stays alive for the 2-2 count. Two gone, a runner on second for the Eagles. Looking to play their third run of this inning. The 2-2, that one in the dirt. Has taken off for third base as Megan Goslin, and she's in there safely. And the Eagles now with a runner at third base with two gone, and now a full count for Tegan Blackie. And you can see how close Diane Ramsey is with her players. The second Goslin had an opportunity, she's screaming and fighting for it to get to third. The 3-2 line through the left side for a base hit. Tegan Blackie scores, uh, excuse me, Megan Goslin scores. Blackie's on first with an RBI single. It's an eight nothing lead for Husson. Husson just capitalizing on every opportunity. <laughs> Forcing Anderson to pitch inside the strike zone, not falling for the mind games Linden tried playing. This one scoots right past Anders Sierra Anderson playing at third. As Aaron Bonifant is going to step up for the third time today. As Goslin scores, it's an 8 0 lead for Husson. Bonifant today singled in the second and reached on an error her last time up. As she swings the lines, this one in the left field for a base hit. Moving up to second is Tegan Blackie. Bonifant's on first for their second single of the day. And the Eagles making a lot of action happen with two gone in this bottom of the fourth. Bonifant came into the contest only having one hit. However, so far, after these past four innings, now making her way up to three hits now in the season. 
Two hits on the game as Madeline Fowler comes to the plate for the third time today. Reached on an error in the second. Sacrifice fly her last time up as she takes strike number one. Had a sack fly back in the third. And of course, scored back in the second after reaching on an error by the center field. Anderson in. Here's the 0-1. Misses high and away for ball number one. And the count is even. Fowler, too, has been one of the key leaders on this Husson softball group. Tatiana Biambi on deck. If the inning were to continue, here's the 1-1 one -one to Fowler. Swing on a grounded foul, just goes foul down the left field line. Did not miss the third base bag by much. It's a 1-2 count for the senior. Anderson over at third, she's been given a lot of action today. Had quite a few ground balls and line drives put her way from these Eagles. So Anderson again, looking to try to get out of this inning without any more damage. Here's the one, two. Swell on and lifted up to center field. Under it is Southworth. She makes the grab, and the side is retired. Eagles plate three in this inning. Final three chances coming up for Linden in the top half of the fifth. You are watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. We're really excited for our new School of Technology and Innovation to prepare students for the jobs that don't yet exist. There's a degree in integrated technology and an extended reality. And what's exciting about that is regardless of your perspective and your passion, there's space to explore that within our programs. Hassan cares about its students and Hassan cares about experiential learning and giving us those experiences to take into our future. Stand is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Stick around for a special presentation of a day in the life of a game day. Following the conclusion of game number one, follow Hudson Softball's Katie Raymond to see what a game day is like for her. Top of the fifth inning from Oakey Field on the campus of Hudson University. Eagles with an 8-0 lead. And the, Lind the Linden Hornets down to their final three outs to try to play to run to take it into the sixth. And for those unfamiliar, Eight run lead after five or more innings is ball game for Division Three college softball. Tatiana Biambi on the mound as she first offering swung on and grabbed the left side, picked up by Fowler, throw on the first in time, and that retires Selena Porter for the first out of the stop of the fifth on one pitch. As Ryan Fortin comes to the plate for the second time today, striking up, swinging back in the second inning. Linden down to their final two outs. Here is the first offering. Check swing, appeal down to first base, and they're gonna say Fortin held up, so it'll be ball number one. Going back on that last play too, Fowler threw a frozen rope right to Gregoire, didn't even have to move an inch. Here's the 1-0, swing on, and this one is gonna be fielded foul. So that one bounced in out in front, and it'll be a ball and a strike to even the count. Not too many times you see that. You can even see Bonafont joking with the ump, saying, hey, come on, let it go in. <laughs> so 1-1, one, one, one out, nobody on base. Here's the pitch. This one's way on the line to right field, and that one's down for a base hit for Ryan Fortin. As this one's thrown back in, then one base is all she will get, and that breaks up the no-hit bid for Husson. Because that'll be Linden's first hit of this game number one. That was a great little blooper right there from Fortin, being able to pinch it in between Bess and Raymond, forcing a drop. Emily Anderson steps in now, looking to help out her own cause, trying to plate that one runner. Struck out her only time, other time up today as she takes strike one on the outside half. Struck out looking back in the second inning. Caitlin Haggett would be on deck if the inning were to continue. Here's the pitch. Check swing. And they're going to say she held up. Appeal up to the 
field umpire, and they are going to say in the appeal, upholds the call. It's a 1-1 one -one count. One out, one on for Linden. Here's the pitch. Outside half, strike two. Biombi really flirting with that inside and outside of the strike zone, making it a little hard to determine. One ball and two strikes. Swell and a missed for strike number three from Emily Anderson. And that's two gone in this top half of the fifth. And it all comes down to Caitlin Haggett. And it's up to her to try to help that runner around if Linden wants to extend this game into the, at least the sixth. If Haggett, too, is able to get a hit on this, it'll be her first on the year. Haggett swings and misses at the first offering, strike one. Two gone in this top of the fifth. Hudson trying to go home with a game one victory on the run rule. The old one. That one just misses low and inside. And it evens the count, a ball and a strike. You can tell Biombi was hoping it would curve it just before it hit the plate. Saw her move her body a little bit. Didn't quite get there. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Biombi. Swung on a miss, strike two. Okay. Here's the one two from Biombi. And in there, strike three called. And that's going to do it as that strike as that is strikeout number two on the inning. That sends Haggett and the Eagles take game number one. Five eight nothing is the final score in game number one. As the Eagles use offense in all four of their at innings that they got up to bat and take home the 8 nothing win on the run rule. Moons couldn't have asked for a better offensive performance from this team. Oh, no, and we certainly mentioned it, too. Some of the keys to the game for Linden was being able to capitalize on their opportunities. They struggled on doing that, and we said the same thing for Hassan was preventing errors as well as being able to capitalize behind the plate, and they certainly did capitalize behind the plate. We saw Megan Godson. We also saw Kenzie Dorr, Katie Raymond, multiple numbers adding to that barrage of runs for the Hudson Eagles offense. All right, we're going to take a look back. Some of the top highlights from game number one. As the Eagles break the huddle. As here we come, we're going to take a look back at it now. Of course, we had pregame for the we had pregame for the Eagles getting ready. Of course, senior the seniors were honored earlier on today. Whitney Bess, Madeline Fowler. Katie Windsor, Megan Goslin, all honored pregame. Just before going on the air this earlier on this afternoon, prior to game number one. As that'll do it for game number one from Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow. Stick around on the Hudson Eagle Sports Network. This has been a presentation of the New England School of Communications at Hudson University.
around for a special presentation of a day in the life of a game day following the conclusion. We follow Hassan Softball, Katie Raymond, to see what a day in the life of a game day is like for Hassan Softball. Hi, <laughs> come on in. Start with a game day lunch, just because I don't have time to eat unless it's at the game. <laughs> I got my sandwiches, veggies, cheese, and my cute little Walmart lunch bag. <laughs> I always do my game day shoes. I got these picked out for today. I have like 20 different pairs of sneakers, but these are the ones for the home opener today. Put these on. All right. Got my lunch. I think that's pretty much it. She's wishing us good luck today on game day too. So. She's a big fan. She'd honestly come to the games if she could. <laughs> so we're gonna head to Aroma Joe's first. I gotta get my game day rush and probably a bagel so I can fuel up. Um, and then after, I'm gonna go to Tegan's and get my game day hair done. It's tradition, Tegan always does it and we normally match. Um, after that, I have class in the business center at 11 and 12. Um, and then right from there, I'm gonna go straight to the field. Uh, warm up start at 1.15. So I'll be dressed and ready by then to go. Bag secured. <laughs> I got blue Hawaiian and plain bagel with cream cheese. You know the vibes. <laughs> We're going to Tegan's house now. All right, perfect. Best game day drink ever. Big supporter of Aroma Joe's. Not a huge Duncan fan. I like Duncan's food, but AJ's for the win. I'm not a big coffee drinker. I know a lot of girls drink a lot of coffee, but coffee doesn't sit well with me, so I make up for rushes. Just made it to Tegan's house, and Kimmy lives here. I love Kimmy. Um, what's the other doing? Hi! <laughs> Welcome to the life of Katie Ray. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that place looks good. I haven't tried it. I don't know, whatever you think. Okay. I'm going to be sitting. Oh, then. Go left. Oh, my gosh. Tegan? I think this is my favorite one. Really? Honestly, yeah. All right. Now we're going to school. Bye, Tegan. Bye. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Literally love home games so much. I don't hate traveling because traveling is fun, but just something about being on our own field, especially when the field looks so beautiful. Just got to school, get ready to go to class. Gotta get that education, you know, that's why I'm here. <laughs> See you guys after class. It's gonna be a good day. All right. Last time. So exciting. <laughs> Alright. Should be good. I got my boa. I think everyone has problems. You know the vibes? It's my prop. <laughs> Don't you love it? It's like my, it's like my per personality trait. Game day, let's go! Um, How are your swings? Um, swings are good. Yeah, you look good. Thanks. My dog. Tell me, tell me something. G game day. What, what do you got? What's going through let's your head? Get some butt. Okay. Yeah, that's let's good. Go. Let's go. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna have a number of games because I always forget. I just want to hit. I just 
want to absolutely crush the ball. I want to play. It's my favorite trophy. On Friday, Kenzie Door was announced on the NFCA D3 Top 50 Players of 2022 list. Her hard work and stellar 2021 freshman season with four home runs, 38 RBIs, and a batting average of 455 led her to winning the NFCA Freshman of the Year and All-American Honors, among many other accolades. We sat with Kenzie and a few of her teammates to discuss the 2022 season. Softball means everything. I have been playing this sport since I can honestly remember, and softball's always been kind of a, a getaway for me, so if I had anything going on off the field, I could always come and play softball for two hours and just forget about everything. It's hard to put in words. I think softball, what it means to me has changed a lot over the years, you know, in high school, it was just a sport I played, but in college, it's kind of like a lifestyle, I guess, especially Husson in the program. It's just so much bigger than a game, I guess. And realistically, it means that like, I have always something or people to go to if I ever need anything. And I have always something to rely on, something to always pick me up and challenge me. I love this sport so much. I just think that baby, being able to represent Husset on my chest and wearing the number 18 is just something incredible. And being able to play next to my sisters and my family on the field is just something I'll never take for granted. The softball is my other family. They are a part of my family as a whole. Every day I come to softball and no matter who it is, they'll say, hi, Daddy, how's your day? Talk to me about anything in life. If I have any issues, I can go to any single person on the team and I know I won't be judged. I won't be looked at differently. They're always there to help and that's something that you can't find in every team. And I think Hassan as a program has always been a program that brings that to the table and I know that not every sport gets to have that, and we have an amazing support system on the softball team. I have a lot of sisters, so when I think of sisters, I think of like us in softball, you know, we get along, we compete, we nag on each other, we make fun of each other. Like, it's just like all the perfect parts that make our imperfect family, I guess. And I think that's like a big part of all of our lifestyles, you know, and it really contributes to those type of things. Kenzie is an absolute firecracker. She is <laughs> she is a big ball of energy and she's usually we we need her sometimes. Um, she's really the spark for this team, to be honest. I mean, Kenzie will get so hype on the field after a really good play and it gets me hype and it gets everyone else too. So Kenzie? Oh my god. Kenzie's energy is honestly unmatched. I think we all bring different type of energy and Kenzie definitely has a different level. Um, you know, if you need someone to fire you up or get your head straight, she's one of the first people to do it. She'll yell at you across the field and you know it's her, you can pick her voice out. But I think it's really important to have people like that because that keeps, you know, the team in check, keeps you in check, keeps everyone hyped up, keeps everyone focused, so. It definitely happens during practice, you know, behind the scenes that a lot of people don't get to see and experience. We're very competitive, and I think, you know, Jill at third really pushes me to be a better third baseman. Maddie at short really pushes me to be a better shortstop. Everyone pushes each other to be the best, you know, we all compete to be on that field and to play. So I think just the competing with each other and always taking advantage of everything else is what pushes us to be better players. I'm looking forward to most, oh gosh, winning. Yeah, definitely winning. And definitely seeing my teammates become better softball players and better humans. Definitely our dance parties. Those were the best, you know, it always got the pre-game jitters out and then post-game we're always dancing again and singing. I think another thing that goes with that is always our energy in the dugout. It's the best feeling in the world. We're always called wacky. So I think we take that with pride and joy. I don't like to predict because anything can happen, but I really think that, you know, whatever happens this season, whatever the outcome is, it's gonna be, we're gonna learn from it. No matter if we win or if we lose, how far we go, how, you know, I think as a team, we're gonna come together and it's gonna be amazing what we do accomplish, but the learning experiences that we're gonna have throughout the season, I think this year are gonna be crazy and I'm just so excited for this season. Are you ready? Ready?
don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh, Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. The following is a presentation of the New England School of Communications at Hudson University. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I want it now and I ain't never gonna back down. I am no regular citizen. No, do you understand what you're witnessing? You cannot tell what the difference is. I want it all and I'm winning it. Yeah. I do not care about opinions. Uh. Time to make a few decisions. Do it. So I can take your position. I'm gonna go get it. I'm punching and kicking. Yeah. I keep on moving it out for me. Just do it and stop what I'm talking to. I'm not expressing no modesty. I can't see nobody stopping me. And we're back live from the O'Keefe Field on the campus of Hudson University for game two of our Saturday afternoon Hudson Eagles softball doubleheader featuring once again the Hornets of U Northern Vermont University at Linden and the Hudson University Eagles. Alongside Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow, Sam Tracy down at field level once again for you on this Saturday afternoon. And Moons, game number one, all Hudson, one hitter in the circle for Eagles pitching staff and nothing but offense on the offensive end of it. Just a, you couldn't have asked for a better game to open up conference play. Oh, yeah, sure. They were certainly just absolutely belting the ball looking back. You had Kenzie Dore getting in on the action. Also looking at this one hit right here from Maddie Fowler. She got into it as well. Megan Goslin coming in three for three with three RBI, including this double right here. And, of course, Tatiana Liambi. Liambi. And then you had McKenna Smith. That was the... McKenna Smith, that was the infield fly called earlier on in the contest. And we can't say enough about McKenna Smith. Nine strikeouts in the circle on the day. McKenna Smith continuing just a fantastic, just a fantastic season as that transfer from St. Anselm. We talked about, too, as she had those 100 strikeouts already just this year. That is phenomenal. She has came in and she has dominated the circle. And now we're going to bring in the third member of our broadcast team, Sam Tracy, who's going to give us a look at today's pitching matchup. Sam? Yeah, starting for the Eagles today, it's the return of the graduate student, Jen Jones. As uh, most graduate students have been given an extra year of eligibility due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it's great to see Jen Jones back in the circle for the Eagles. All right, thank you very much, Sam. We'll hear from you again later on in the day as we are just about set and ready to, go to get things underway for game number two against the Linden Hornets. For the Hornets, it'll be Amber Everett, Blake Southworth, Sierra Anderson, Claudia Knapp, Serena Porter, Ryan, Ryan Fortin, Vicky Valentine, Laura Scigliano, and Emily Anderson. The lineup is the first delivery from Jen Jones in there for misses for ball number one to Everett. Here's the second offering. That one, that one misses low and away, ball number two. Defensive, a lot of the same for the Eagles in game number two. Jen Jones in the circle, Tori Excel at first base, and Jess Parmelo get the start at right field. Other than that, same lineup for the Eagles as game one as Jones fires strike number one to Amber Everett for a two ball, one strike count. Here's the two one from Jones. That one in there, strike number two, and Jones fights her way back. Two balls and two strikes to Everett. It'll be Everett, Southworth, and Anderson all due up. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swung on a miss, strike number three, and that retires Amber Everett. And Jen Jones making her return in style, striking out the first batter she sees in another season of work for the graduate student in her second year of graduate eligibility for this Eagles squad as Blake Southworth steps in for the first time in game two, center fielder. Here's the first offering. In there, strike number one on the inside lower half. Jones kept 
picking up right where she left off last year, bringing the heat. She's sort of been down the ace up Diane Ramsey's sleeve. Here's the second offering from Jones. That one misses high and away for to even the count of ball to strike. Southworth coming into today. Batting 267, 8 for 30 with a double and 9 RBI. The 1-1. One, one. That one misses low and in. Two balls and a strike for Southworth. Sierra Anderson also due up this inning. In game number two. Wind is picked up out there as the flag now blew, blowing a little bit more oomph out in dead center field as the 2-1 becomes a 3-1 as that pitch was low and inside and a hitter's count for Sierra Anderson. Excuse me, for Blake Southworth. Three balls and a strike, one gun, nobody on base. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled back to the screen and the count is full. That fastball from Jones is just lethal. Very hard to get behind the ball on those. You typically see batters foul it off whenever they're given the opportunity. So three balls and two strikes for Southworth. One gun and nobody on base, top of the first inning. Jones has her sign. The three, two. That one misses low, and it's ball number four. And Blake Southworth trots to first with the one-out walk. And already, and already Linden matching the amount of base, um, already got half of the amount of base runners that they had in game number one and only managed two. As Sierra Anderson comes to the plate for the first time in game two. Here's the first offering from Jones. That one misses low and away, ball one. Jones having a hard time. She's trying to pin it on the inside and outside strike zone, but flirting with the line, not necessarily keeping it within. Anderson came into the day batting 484. That one's in there for strike one. Here's the throw down to first, not in time as Southworth back in safely. Ball to strike on the count for Anderson. Megan Goslin now behind the dish for Husson. Aaron Bonifant moves to the designated player position for this game. Here's the 1-1. One -one. That one misses in the dirt. Goslin picks it up, keeps Southworth at bay. Two balls and a strike count. Goslin got a little eye peeking over at Southworth, seeing if she'll take too far of a lead to be able to stripe her out. Here's the 2 1 from Jones. That one misses high and inside. So, another hitter's count up for Anderson. Three balls and a strike. Here's the pitch from Jones. That one bounced in the dirt for ball number four, and then Linden has two. It's your future, so why keep it waiting? At Husson University, we're ready to help you take the next step in your education toward the career you've been dreaming of. Husson.edu. Body and app at the dish now with two on for Linden. Here's the first offering from Jones in there. Strike number one on the outside half. Linden with their biggest threat of the day as they did not as they never had two base runners on in one inning in game number one. Already have two on in this top of the first. Here's the second offering from Jones. That one misses inside and low. Snap two has the most RBIs on this team with eleven. She's already got a runner in scoring position set up for. Game into the day batting 371. Here's the one one. Right down the dish. For strike number two to Knapp. It'll be a ball and two strike count for the Hornets catcher today. Jones has her sign. The one, two. That one misses low and inside and the count is even two and two and that did not miss by much. Nah. We send it down to Sam Tracy. Yeah, for the Eagles. As Knapp swings and misses for strike number three, and that's two gone in the stop of the first. Jen Jones missing her battle. As now we send it back to Sam Tracy. Fellas, we've got action in the Eagles' bullpen. It's Jill Bisson, the junior out of Gardner, warming up in the bullpen for the Eagles. Bisson got the win against the Monks earlier on this week. In game number two, as Jones fires ball one low to Serena Porter. Play shortstop today in game number two for the Hornets. Jones has her sign, delivers. Swing on, and this one's popped foul down the left field line and into the bullpen. That'll be strike number one for Porter. Linden starting to get a little more bats on it. 
early on in this matchup. However, they've still had a hard time capitalizing. Hopefully, we'll see if they're able to advance any runners. Jen Jones, a number of accolades to the list of her on her college resume. Here's the 1-1. One -one. That one misses low and away. Ball two. Jones, of course, helped her help the Eagles squad to two wins away from advancing in the NCAA regional playoffs. This was swung on the ground to the left side, picked up by Dorr, throw on the first in time, and the side is retired. Linden leaves two stranded. We head to the bottom half of the first. No score. You're watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. We're really excited for our new School of Technology and Innovation to prepare students for the jobs that don't yet exist. There's a degree in integrated technology and an extended reality. And what's exciting about that is regardless of your perspective and your passion, there's space to explore that within our programs. Hassan cares about its students and Hassan cares about experiential learning and giving us those experiences to take into our future. Back here from the Oki Field on the campus of Hudson University and a great crowd on hand for the North Atlantic Conference opener on this Saturday afternoon. Nearly full capacity for what has become a rather cloudy Saturday afternoon. Eagles getting ready to bat in the bottom half of the first inning. No score. Alongside Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow, Sam Tracy down at field level as the Eagles getting ready to bat in this bottom half of the first. Katie Windsor, Kenzie Dorr, and Whitney Bess all do up. Windsor playing second base for the Eagles in game number two as she did in game one. Will face Emily Anderson for the second game today. She got the start in game number one as well. And they'll look to her for game number two. Here's the first offering. That one Outside half, strike one to Katie Windsor. Anderson's going to have to be a little careful on her pitch placement here with it being the second game of the day. Not going to want to put too much heavy duty on that arm. It's the old one from Anderson. That one put in the dirt to even the count of all the strike. They can wait for Kenzie Dorr and Whitney Bess. Well, I'll come up there's in and the Eagles have scored the first run. And now the last three games, of course, they struck first in the bottom of the first inning against St. Joe's and both games back on Wednesday. They did it earlier on this afternoon. Here's the 1-1. That one bounced in the dirt again, and it's two balls and a strike to Windsor. That's Anderson's second pitch now. That's very inside. She's got to be careful. So two balls and a strike. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom of the first inning. Windsor back in, waits for the pitch. Anderson has her sign, sets the two on. That one misses low and inside, and it's a hitter's count for Windsor. Windsor keeping a good eye on it, not forcing anything outside of the zone, waiting for Anderson to have to put it in the box. Here's a 3-1. Swayana lined right into the glove of Sierra Anderson, and a great diving play made at third base. Retires Katie Windsor, and that's one away. Man, she has been active today. She's had at least three or four line drives put right at pace level. She's been ready every single one. And you can't ask for a better play from Anderson. Ranged right over and got the grab on the diving play, and that will make way for Kenzie Dorr. Dorr had, himself, had herself a single back in the first game today as she sends this one in the left center field, and that one's down for a base hit on the first pitch. CeCe's takes the big turn at first, but she will, that's all she will get. And Kenzie Dorr has a one-out single in the bottom of the first. Dorr, very active. Looking back at this one, just a little inside, able to hook it right over Porter. Puts it in the shallow left, forcing Adams to have to come back and grab it. So that'll bring up Whitney Bess, center fielder for the Eagles. 
in game number two. Seniors held on to that center field spot for a long time. Here's the first offering from Anderson. That one put in the dirt, ball one. Anderson still struggling on keeping it in the strike zone. She's been pitching it almost notorious this first match in this second matchup on the inside. So one ball, no strikes, and one gone. One on base for the Eagles, bottom of the first. The pitch from Anderson in there for strike one, and the count is even. Tell that one right there, Bess. Thought it was going to stay high, but dropped right as it was about to cross the plate. So Bess back in. Eagles looking to strike first once again. Here's the 1-1 from Anderson. Swing on, and this one's lifted out the left field. Going back forward is Valentine. She makes the grab, and that's two away in this bottom of the first. Doors forced to retreat back to first. And that's two away in this bottom of the first inning. Good rope right there, able to hit Porter on the one hop, not allowing Door to be able to advance. So Vicky Valentine getting the start out in left field today. She didn't start in game number one. Makes the second out of this bottom of the first as Megan Goslin steps in for the first time. Here's the first offering, and that one hit her. And Megan Goslin will trot to first on the first pitch she sees on the hit by pitch. Goslin had herself quite the game in game one, Moons. Three for three, two doubles and a single for five RBI. As Goslin wears this one, and that'll make way for Tori Excel. Excel did not play in game one, and she didn't play at all on Wednesday. She's a first-year player from North Berwick. One of five, a strikeout for a 200 average in four games appeared in this 2022 season, playing first base today. Here's the first offering. Here's the third down to first, and they got Kenzie Doerr at third. They tried to pull off the double steal, and that retires the side. Eagles threat, but they can't play it any. We head to the top after the second. No score. You're watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Tech careers start here. Extended reality. Integrated technology. Computer information systems. Software development. Web design and development. Learn to create innovative solutions with cutting edge technology at Husson University. Stand is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Ready for action? Hudson University competes in NCAA Division III and has won more than 150 conference championships so far. Hudson.edu. Back here from Oakey Field, top of the second inning, no score in game number two of our Saturday afternoon softball doubleheader. Alongside Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow. Sam Tracy down at field level on this Saturday afternoon. Lyndon getting ready to step in for the second time in game number two. It'll be Rihanna Fortin, Vicky Valentine, Laura Scigliano. All do up this inning. Jen Jones in the circle as, uh, as Fortin lines this one right back up the middle and through center field for a base hit. And just like that, Linden's got themselves a base runner on. Nobody out top of the second. Fortin now finds himself with a third hit of the year. That one striped right up the middle past Jen Jones. Couldn't react in time. So that puts, so that puts Linden with their already has more base runners than they did in all of game number one. That's their third of the day. They left two stranded back at the top of the first. Vicky Valentine steps to the plate for the first time today. Did not start game number one. Here's the first offering from Jones. Swung on and missed, strike number one. Vicky Valentine on the year. Eight of 32, two doubles, 10 RBI, five walks, a strikeout for a 250 average. Here's the all one. That one outside half, strike two. And Valentine quickly down 0-2 in the count. 
Chantel Valentine choking up on the bat a little bit, ready for this ball. Here's the 0-2. Swing on a miss, strike number three to Valentine. And she's retired on three straight pitches from Jen Jones. Jen Jones, you can tell, starting to get into a little groove now. Took her a little bit, took her a few batters. However, now you can see she's starting to find her patience. Lauren Siciliano steps in now for the first time today. Eight of 33, a double, seven RBI. She swings and fouls this one back to the screen. Let me strike one. Siciliano, seven RBI, three walks, 11 strikeouts, four for four on stolen bases with a 242 batting average. 306 on base percentage with three walks drawn this year. Here's the 0-1. That one called strike two on the outside half. Make that five consecutive strikes thrown by Jen Jones. You can tell right now, each pitch is getting more and more comfortable with this groove. No balls, two strikes, one on, one out for Linden. Here's the pitch. That one just missed outside. And it'll be a one-two count for Jen Jones. Jones was hoping to be able to fool her right there, putting it on that outside. However, Siciliano was ready. Jones has her sign, sets the one-two. Swung on and fouled back to the screen. And Siciliano putting up a good fight against Jen Jones. Breeze is picked up here this afternoon, blowing out of the south-southeast at 15 miles per hour. Here's the one-two from Jones. Swing on a miss, strike three. And that's back-to-back -back strikeout swinging for Jen Jones. Make that four strikeouts on the day for her so far, as that'll bring up Emily Anderson to the plate. Jones just putting that one too far over, forcing Siciliano to have to chase it. Here's the first offering from Jones. That one misses low. Ball number one to Anderson. Amber Everett on deck, back at the top of the order, would come up if the inning were to continue. Here's the 1-0. That one misses high and away, ball two. Jen Jones. In her return to Eagles softball, her first appearance since the final game of the Bangor Regional last May. Here's the 2-0. That one, high outside half for strike one, and Jones battles her way back. Jones was named the most outstanding player of that regional tournament. Here's the 2-1. Swing on a miss, strike two. And Jones has fought her way, fought her way back. There's a strike away from taking care of the side. Jones looks in, has her sign. The 2-2. That one just misses outside, and the count is full at three, three balls, two strikes. Anderson saw that one, knew that Jones was going to try and make her bite on that outside pitch. Three balls, two strikes, two out, one on for Linden. The pitch. Swing on and missed for strike number three. As a strikeout of the side for Jen Jones. Lyndon leaves a runner stranded. We head to the bottom half of the second inning. You are watching Huston Eagles softball on the Huston Eagles Sports Network. Thank you. Back live from Oakey Field on the campus of Husson University. It's Husson Eagles softball for game number two of our Saturday afternoon at North Atlantic Conference doubleheader. Alongside Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow. Sam Tracy down at field level on the Husson Eagles Sports Network. As we have no score, as the Eagles get ready to bat in the bottom half of the second inning, it'll be Tori Excel leading things off in this 
bottom half of the second. XL on the air, one of five, a strikeout for a 200 average and four games appeared. Taking on Emily Anderson on, in the circle for Linden. His first offering, swung on a miss, strike one to XL. XL saw that one was slightly inside, put the trigger right on it. From North Berwick, Maine, the first year player. Anderson in. The 0 one. This one's one on a grounded foul, and that one nearly got blacky waiting in the on deck circle. The next out quickly down 0 2. It's just about to say, Blackie had to do a little rope jump right there, hopping over the ball. Looks like a light rain starting to fall here from O'Keefe Field. Showers were in the forecast this afternoon. Here's the 0 2. Swing on, and this one's lifted pretty well out the left field. Having to go back for it is. Having to go back for that one was Valentine, and she made the catch out on the warning track. So allowed out number one for Tori XL, and she's retired. And that's been the big difference, too. Looking back at this, XL belts this one all the way down to the warning track. However, last matchup, there were some costly errors from Linden. That time, Valentine says, I got this. That'll bring up Tegan Blackie for the first time today, playing left field for Husson. Here's the first offering. Swung on, and this one's popped up left side. Underneath it is Serena Porter, and she makes the grab, and that's two away in this bottom of the second. Routine out. We've seen Linden. They've cleaned up their game on the defensive side. No lackluster errors so far. Erin Bonifant will now come to the plate. Designated player today. She caught in game number one. She'll be doing the hitting for Jen Jones. Here's the first offering. So on. This one's lined right out the center field and down for a base hit. Fielded by Blake Southworth. She gets it in, and it's a two-out single for Aaron Bonifant. Man, that was a rocket coming off the bat from Bonifant. Did a little knuckle curve going around, looking back at this hit right off the bat. Just makes his way up through center field. Bonifant's third single of the day. She singled twice back in game number one. Madeline Fowler now to the plate. That shortstop for the Eagles in game number two is the first offer, and that one in the dirt, ball one. Madeline Flowers, she may be all smiles for this team over her walk-up theme song of Darth Vader, says it all as she comes up, she means business behind the plate. Fowler from East Bear, Vermont, batting 222 coming into the afternoon. Here's the 1-0. Swing on and grounded foul left side. It's a 1-1 count. Fowler making some good contact, just slightly above the ball on that one. Ball a strike for Fowler, two gone, bottom of the second. Bonifant on first base for Husson. Looking to strike first blood in game number two. Here's the 1-1. One, one. on, and this one's lined right over the glove of Porter and in the left field for a base hit. Bonifant's going to put on the brakes a quarter of the way to third and retreat back to second base. And back-to-back -back singles for Husson from Fowler and Bonifant. And they have two on with two outs. Bonifant on that, on that hit from Fowler. Wanted to keep going to third. Coach Ramsey saying, stay, stay. There's a good clean field by Vicky Valentine. As that brings up Jess Pomerlo for the first time today. Starting in right field for game number two. Here's the first offering. Outside half, strike number one to Pomerlo. Pomerlo, one of four, two strikeouts for a 250 average of seven games appeared on the season. Sophomore from Greenville. Here's the all one. Swing on a miss, strike number one, excuse me, strike two. Parmelo quickly down to the count, no balls, two strikes. Anderson put a little bit of a change up on that one, just dropping it right for Parmelo. So Anderson in, looking to take care of Parmelo. Here's the 0-2, that one's in the dirt. And actually plunks Parmelo on the bounce. And just like that, after sitting down the first two batters she saw, Anderson's now got a bases loaded situation to deal with as that is gonna send the top of the order to the plate in Katie Windsor. And the Eagles with a chance, with a big chance to strike in this bottom of the second. Here's the first offering to Windsor. Swing on and grounded foul down the left field line. Windsor too, she realizes what's at stake here. Realizes the opportunity being given, swings on the first one, just unable to keep it in fair play. Windsor last time up today, back in the first, lined out to Sierra Anderson at second, as a third base, excuse me. Has an 0-1 count here. Two gone, bases loaded with Eagles, bottom of the second. The pitch, 
This one's swung and this one's lined up to center field, and that's down for a base hit. One run scores, two runs are going to score, and it's a two out RBI single for Katie Windsor, and the Eagles lead it two to nothing. Windsor right there, perfect placement. Plops it just out of the reach from Southwark, allowing two runners to be able to advance. And looking at Bomberlow too, when she rounded second, she wanted to keep on going all the way to home. However, Diane Ramsey showing some great co base running coaching right there, saying, hey, let's stick at third, get it where we can get it. Pomelo ends up at third as Kenzie Doerr comes to the plate for the second time today. She singled her last time up, was thrown out trying to steal third as she takes strike one on the lower outside half. The two RBI single for Katie Windsor. Door. Anderson in, waits for a sign. Here's the 0-1. That one misses low and away. Anderson starting to let these inside pitches get away from her a little bit here. She did a great job in that first inning. However, in the second, she had a hard time corralling him inside the box. Door sophomore from just down the road in Holden. But attended Brewer High School, helped them to a successful campaign a few years back as he swings and pops this one up left side. Ranging over is Anderson and is going to land out of play just behind the Eagles dugout. And that'll be strike number two for Kenzie Door. Man, that was a moonshot from Kenzie Door. So one ball, two strikes. Runners on the corners for Husson. Two gone, bottom of the second. Eagles have plated two in this inning, looking for more. Door back in. The one, two. Swing on and foul, popped up foul, left side, excuse me, right side out of play. The door fights off another pitch, and the count remains one ball and two strikes. Anderson, good job right there. A little change of pace, putting in that outside part of the plate. Dangerous with its Kenzie door, but if you can get her to bite when it's too far outside, always a great strike. Here's the one, two to door, and that one is behind her. A good stop made by Knapp. Pomelo was taken off for third, and she puts on the brakes and retreats back to third. A good heads-up play there from Pomelo, who nearly ran into the end of the inning. Knapp right there, too. Great little scoop, having to just scooch by on that left side. Gets past Door. Great grab right there, and great stretch. So 2-2 two -two count for Door. Here's the pitch. Swing on him. This one's lifted pretty well at the left field. Valentine can't get there. It gets by her. One run scores. Two runs are going to score. Door rounding second and trying for three. And she slides into third base. I believe they'll give her a two RBI triple. And the Eagles have a 4 nothing lead. Door might have got thrown out trying to steal for third. Whoever run in the third this time, she was safe by a mile. Looking at that, just smacks it all the way out into left field. Made it hard for Valentine to be able to make a play on it. Valentine tried the diving play. She couldn't quite get there. And a two RBI triple for Kenzie Door Gives the Eagles a 4 nothing lead as Palmer Lowe and Windsor score on the play. Windsor scoring all the way from first base. As Whitney Bess is now going to step in. We're going to keep things rolling for the Eagles. Here's the first offering to Bess. That one is low and inside. Ball one. And Mackenzie Doerr, these past two games, has just been lighting it up. So Doerr records her second triple in the last three games. Here's the 1-0 to Bess in there for strike one to even the count. Doerr, of course, back on Wednesday against the Monks. A two RBI triple. Anderson in. The 1-1. One -one. Swung on and grounded left side. In through for a base hit. That's going to score Kenzie Doerr. Best round second, and it's a two-out RBI single for Whitney Bess. And the Eagles have played it five with two outs in this inning. Not too much, too, on the defensive side that these Hornets are able to do. Eagles just slugging it right in between the gaps on the infield and the outfield against these Hornets, allowing these Eagles to take every opportunity they've been given. Megan Goslin steps in and she'll swing and pop this one up right side in play for Fortin. She makes the grab and that retires the side. Eagles putting five runs with two outs in the bottom of the second. They have themselves a 5 nothing lead. We head to the top half of the third. You are watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh boy. Our back and forth. 
it always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Choosing a school is really difficult, but I have never felt like I should have gone somewhere else. The thing about I like about the school, the class sizes are smaller. Making friends is easier here because of the fact that you are such a tight-knit community. I was shooting around a basketball, that's how I met my first friend. You meet a lot of new people from different areas of the world. I feel like I've grown so much here. And there's so many amazing people that work here to learn from. I definitely made the right decision coming to Hassan. All right, back here from O'Keefe Field, we take a look at the upcoming uh, Husson softball schedule. They'll be in action right back here tomorrow afternoon for a doubleheader with the Bat Johnson Badgers starting at noontime. Then they're going to head on the road to Plymouth State later on this week, and then they are going to go on to play UMF a little bit later on in April. Rain starting to pick up here from O'Keefe Field as still in the circle for the Eagles is Jen Jones stepping in for... The Badgers is going to be Amber Everett, the top of the order, as now we have a new, we have a replacement out in left field for Husson. It'll be Kiara McLeod now in left field as a Everett's going to try to get a bunt down. She fouls it off the first offering. That'll be straight number one for Everett. So Tegan Blackie only spending a couple of, ga couple of innings out in out in left field, she'll be replaced by Kiara McLeod. Here's the 0-1. This one's popped up and caught by Gosselin on the dive. What a play by Megan Gosselin to track that one down, and that one retires Everett. What a great track down from Megan Gosselin behind the dish. She didn't even flick off the helmet either. She just turned around, looked up, stuck a glove out, and realized, hey, I got this on lockdown. Take another look at this one. McLeod, a great track down, and got it on the dive. What a play from... Goslin behind the plate, and that's one retired. Here's the first offering to Blake South, where she fouls it off to the right side out of play. Southworth walked her last time up back in the first inning. Southworth, 267 average from Bethel, Vermont. Here's the 0 1. Swing on. This one's popped up right side, and that's going to head out of play beyond the Linden dugout. Rain and wind starting to pick up here, Moons, as we have some, some have taken cover, some have dug out the jackets and the umbrellas in the stands. A little change of events, that first, first game, nice, bright blue skies, second game, a little different story here. Well, you know, there's an old saying in Maine, Moons, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it's going to change, and we've had about three different seasons today, it seems like. Yeah, you are right, right, right on point with that one, Ethan. Here's the 0-2 to Southworth. This one swung on a popped up foul right side and out of play once again. Southworth, if Southworth can hit the ball just a little bit higher, she's been hitting it low for the, so it's been fouling off. She'll be able to get that barrel of the bat, make some great contact. Anderson batting 484 on this season coming into today. Have an 0-2 count. Jen Jones looking to retire her fifth consecutive batter. Here's the 0-2. That's why on, and this one's popped up and onto the roof of the press box here at O'Keefe Field. Southworth doing a great job fighting off everything she's seeing so far, trying to stay alive. She doesn't even have a ball on the count yet either. She's been... Playing very aggressive against Jones. No balls, two strikes on the count for Southworth. The pitch, swing on and miss for strike number three, and Jones went to the off speed and got her, and that's two retired in this top half of the third. So difficult as a hitter when you go from having like a 60, 70 mile an hour fastball thrown at you to just having that off speed pitch thrown by Jones fools them almost every time. So now stepping up, Sierra Anderson for the second time today. She walked her last time up, and she'll take ball number one outside from Jen Jones. Two up and two down for Linden in the stop after the third inning, down five, nothing. Here's the pitch from Jones. That one swung on and grounded right side, fielded by Windsor, throw on the first in time, and that retires the side. Three up and three down for Linden. 
We head to the bottom half of the third. Eagles with a 5 0 lead. You are watching Hudson Eagles Softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign, not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. On Thursday, April 28th, the electrifying, genre-smashing trio Take Three is coming to the Gracie Theater. Take Three, passionate, captivating arrangements from Beethoven to Bieber. You'll hear hits like Hallelujah, Unchained Melody, even Sweet Home Alabama. Take Three, April 28th at the Gracie. Tickets $15 to $25. Call 941-7888 or go to gracietheater.com. Back here from O'Keefe Field, we take a look at Linden's upcoming schedule. They're going to head up to Orono tomorrow to play the UMaine Presque Isle Owls in the Mahaney Dome up on the UMaine campus. They're going to take on Johnson next weekend for a doubleheader. They will travel to play Bay Path. That'll be a little bit later on in the, the month of April. So they look to finish up. There are only two games for the Eagles this season this afternoon. Rain continuing to fall pretty steadily from O'Key Field as Tori Excel is going to step to the plate for the second time in as many innings as the Eagles saw all nine batters in the bottom half of the second. Excel flew out to left field all the way out to the warning track last inning. Emily Anderson still in the circle for the Hornets. Here's the first offering. That one, low outside half for strike number one to Excel. Linden looking to try to spark any sort of offense they can find. Down 5 nothing. That hit from Excel, too. That seemed like it was going out. Here's the 0-1. That's why on, and this one's popped up shallow infield, and it lands in foul territory. And that'll be two strikes on the count for Excel. Excel swinging on an inside pitch on that one, forcing it to go only a few feet into the infield. Luckily, it played into foul territory for her. It'll be the 5 6 7 Spots up here for Hudson in this third inning will be Kiara McLeod on deck, replacing Tegan Blackie. Out in left field last inning. Anderson has her sign set. Here's the 0-2. Swing on and grounded left side. Good field made by, good field made there by Anderson. Throw on to first. A great pick by Rian Fortin. And Excel is, Excel is retired, and that's one away in this bottom half of the third. That was a difficult scoop right there from Fortin, throwing it down in the dirt, forcing her to have to stretch out and be able to scoop it up. However, she gets the result and gets the out for Linden. Kiara McLeod steps in. This is only her second at-bat of this season as she swings and fouls this one back to the screen. 0 for 1 with a strikeout for McLeod. Looking to try to make things happen. From Harrison, Maine, first year player. Anderson's all in the circle, rain falling. Oh one. Oh one to Anderson. From Anderson is outside, even the count of the ball to strike. Here's the 1-1 one, one from Anderson. That one in the dirt and nearly got McLeod in the ankles. And it'll be a 2-1 count. McLeod, little up in the count. She's got some leeway if she wants to take one. Two balls and a strike, one gone. Nobody on base for Husson. Here's the pitch. That one called strike two on the outside half. And the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Aaron Bonifant on deck. <laughs> Anderson waits for her sign. She has it. Sets. The 2-2. Two -two. Check swing and appeal down to the first base. And she held up. And the count is full of three balls and two strikes. Smart pullback right there from Bonifant. Not committing, keeping herself in this fight. And now I believe they're trying to look for a dry softball. 
as the rain is now still continues to pick up from O'Keefe Field as now fans are starting to head for the decks. As it is raining the hardest and it's raining the hardest has been all day and Moons of course O'Keefe being a natural surface. We'll see how long the rain lasts before they decide to be like, all right, let's bring everybody inside and wait it out a little bit. We'll see if they do go to that or not. Yeah, it's like we talked about this pregame. It's going to have to pour for them to be able to really cancel these conditions, and it's starting to flirt with those lines. The 3-2 is in the dirt, and McLeod is on base with the full count walk with one gun. So McLeod finds herself on base. As that'll bring up Aaron Bonifant. For the second time today, she singled and eventually scored last inning, as representing the first of five runs scored back in the second inning. Anderson in the circle, here's the first offering to Bonifant. That one misses low and inside. Eagles two, <laughs> if you look, you can't see it from this angle, but they have one person in the dugout keeping a ball dry at all times to be able to distribute. Time to dig out the towels and keep them fresh and keep them coming. Ball, no strike count, the pitch, that one way outside. Ball two to Bonifant. She's been pretty patient this so far in these two matchups. Been really waiting for her to get those pitches inside. 2-0 count, one gone, one on base for the Eagles. Bottom half of the third, here's the pitch. This one swung on and lifted pretty well at the center field. Raging on to make the grab, she couldn't quite get there. It was Blake Southworth. She throws it in, and that'll be a put two on with one out. It'll be another single for Aaron Bonifant as Southworth nearly had the underhanded grab but just couldn't quite get there. I don't think the rain helped her out too much either. You can see she gets a snow cone for a second, but Leather just does not hold up too well. So that'll bring up Madeline Fowler for the second time today. She singled and eventually scored back in the last inning. So Fowler on, Anderson. Waits for her side, now he's got to deal with two base runners. Here's the pitch. This one swung on and lifted pretty well out the left field. That's going to tail foul into the batting cages. Tell you what, she was able to keep that into fair play. Had a good chance of flirting with that home run line. So no ball, one strike count for Fowler. One gone, two on base for Husson. Bottom half of the third with a 5-0 lead. And the rain coming down at a pretty good rate. Here's the 0-1. That one misses high, ball two. Excuse me, ball number one to even the count, ball on the strike for Fowler. Pouring rain here from O'Key Field. They'll keep them playing. Ball on a strike from Anderson, here's the pitch. So I on and grounded foul left side. There'll be a ball and two strike count for Madeline Fowler. But at least Husson's hit majority of their hits so far in that left side, left center type of the field today. And now, Linden's head coach just coming out. Kevin Valentine in his third season comes out, gives his pitcher a fresh softball. Ball and two strikes on the count for Madeline Fowler. One gone, bottom of the third. Fowler in. One, two. That one in the dirt. They're gonna try to, they're gonna try to steal third into the throw down, and McLeod is safe. As Knapp had a good job to keep that one in front of her, but the throw down the third, not in time, and the Eagles pull off the double steal. And just like that, Husson's got two in scoring position with one out. As Husson's down, 27th stolen base on the season. So, 2-2 two -two count, 2-1, two one, one out. Here's the pitch. That one high, and it goes to the backstop, and the, McLeod is going to score on the wild pitch from Anderson, and it's a 6-0 lead for Husson. Not much you can do right there if you're Knapp. Knapp tried to get up out of the stretch to be able to knock it down, be able to prevent the fast pass ball. That one, a wet ball might have had something to do with that from Anderson as she lost the handle of that one way out of the reach of Knapp. And that scores another run. It's a 6 0 lead for Husson. Bottom of the third, still one gone. And a full count coming for Madeline Fowler. Fowler getting ready to step back in. Three balls, two strikes, one gone. Bottom of the third. Here, Bonifant down at third base. Here's the pitch. Toyon have popped foul right side, and that one's out of play. 
Fowler staying alive. Looking to try to prevent as much damage as she can in this bottom half of the third. Linden still trying to look for their first run of the day when they come up to bat in the top of the fourth. Anderson has her sign. Here's the 3 2. Outside half, strike three call to Madeline Fowler, and that's two retired in this bottom half of the third. Great placement right there from Anderson, putting it on that outside top right of the zone. That'll bring up Jess Pomerlo. She was hit by a pitch back in the second inning and eventually scored. Comes to the plate for the second time today. Anderson is in, has her sign, the first offering. That one high and inside, ball one to Pomerlo. Pomelo too, showed she's got some speed, had some great base running in her last time. Pomelo back in, Anderson waits for her sign. The 1-0, it's one on and this one's popped up, middle infield, coming in to try to grab it. Is Anderson, she can't get there. An infield hit for Pomelo brings in Aaron Bonifant, and it's a 7-0 Hudson lead. And if you're Porter, you've got to call off Anderson on that one. You've got the rights at shortstop. Instead, you can see she lets up, tries to let Anderson get there in time. Instead, gives up another run. And so, that looks like it'll do it for Emily Anderson. They're gonna have a pitching change. When we come back, we'll see, we'll, when we come back, we'll see who's in the circle for Linden. You're watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watcha. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? Well, now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Back here from Oak Key Field on the campus of Huston University. Huston Eagles softball with a 7-0 lead over the Linden Hornets of Northern Vermont University. We have a pitching change from Oak Key Field. Linden looking to their first year. Sierra Anderson from Summersworth, New Hampshire. Anderson making her first appearance in the circle on the year for Linden. It's not pitched at all in the, the previous 11 games for the Hornets. Going, moving over to third base will be Lauren Siciliano, and we'll find out who will be bet, and we find out who will be. We'll find out who will move over to right field here momentarily. As Anderson, as Sierra Anderson now, look, waiting to try to get one back up. And Moons, so far, as, Moon so far has been all Eagles, both just really all day long, both on the pitching ends and on the uh, batting end as well. And a lot of these runs for the Eagles have been, have been played with two outs, which just speaks to their ability to have those quality at-bats. Yeah, the big thing is too, Eagles just not giving up on the opportunities. They've really capitalized on every single time they've had. And the biggest thing that we've seen, even though their base run running was a little sloppy early on, they've really picked it up. Katie Windsor steps in now, top, back to the top of the order for Husson. She takes strike number one from Sierra Anderson. Here's the 0-1. That one misses high and away for a ball number one. The count is even. Jess Pomelo on first. Eagles with a 7-0 lead. Here's the 1-1. That one misses high and away. Ball two to Windsor. It would circle back to Kenzie Dore, who has a single and a triple in this game in this game alone. Here's the pitch. That one low in the dirt. It gets away from Knapp. Barmelo 
moves up to second, takes a big turn, but is going to put on the brakes and retreat. And that'll be a 3-1 count for Windsor. Pomelo on that one, showing her speed already, saying, hey, if you're going to take your time on that pass ball, I'm going to take another base. So three balls and a strike on the count for Katie Windsor. Jess Pomelo now on second base for the Eagles. With a 7-0 lead. Two gone, bottom of the third. Anderson waits for her sign. 3-1. That's one swung on and fouled right side into the screen. And the count is full for Katie Windsor. Windsor's found herself in a couple situations like this early on. However, typically she's been battling herself out of it. Rain continues to fall from O'Keefe Field. It's now the field umpire is going to come in and have a chat with Sierra Anderson. What about? Who knows? Possibly, possibly discussing timing of timing of the pitch. Possibly could be discussing you know, deli um, delivery technique. Looked like he was helping out too on just drying the ball, trying to show her where, hey, if you put your hand here, it'll dry it off a lot more. Here's the 3-2. That one's one on and grounded right back at Anderson. She throws on to first, and his throw is in time, and that retires the side. Eagles play two on this bottom half of the third. They take a 7-0 lead. We head to the top half of the fourth inning. You're watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. My name is Olivia McCarty. I did build a softball field in my backyard with my dad. It was just one of those things where we thought it'd be cool and a lot easier to just step foot in your backyard to be able to practice, especially with such busy schedules. You don't need to find a field and everything. It'd just be a lot easier. It was definitely my dad's idea, and it was this huge pipe dream. My mother said that it would never happen, and then it took three years to build, and we finally got it done. Sometimes we've had like a rain out, and we couldn't get a field for my travel team, so then they would just come over to my house and we've had practice there too. The goal that me and my dad have is to make an addition to the field every year. My father has always been my number one supporter and everything we do is together. So when he asks, you know, oh, let's go pick up these logs or cut these trees down, although I may be like, oh, I don't really want to do that, he's always going to be there for me and he's always going to be the one that helps me in the backyard. No hesitation about it. Just one of the cool aspects of this team. You have all, you have every team seems to have those few players that have always done something a little bit out of the ordinary. And Olivia McCarty with her father building her own softball field right in her backyard. Yeah, that's just impressive too. Being able to put that all together, not an easy task. And it also shows the dedication she has towards the sport and for her team. Back here, top of the fourth inning. Jen Jones still in the circle, firing strike number one, swinging to Claudia Knapp who struck out with swinging back in the first inning. Linden so far being one hit in game number two. Here's the second offering from Jones, swung on and grounded foul left side. And a quick two strikes on the count for Claudia Knapp, doing the catching for the Hornets in game two. She caught in game one as well. she got four home runs, two on the season. However, she struggled going up against Jen Jones along with McKenna Smith. And Jones is going to call for a fresh softball, dry softball. And she'll get one from her catcher, Megan Goslin. It'll be Knapp, Porter, and Fortin all due up this inning. Here's the 0-2. That one misses high and away for a ball number one to Knapp. See if, these, if this rain will affect Jones being able to pitch those heaters right down the middle like she usually does. So Jones, here's the one, two. That one misses low and inside. Ball number one, ball number two, and the count is even. Two balls, two strikes for Knapp. Here's the pitch. That one swung on a missed on the foul tip. And that retires Claudia Knapp, and that is one away in this top of the fourth. Jones smart right there, pitching outside down the middle, making Knapp to have to force herself reach out of the zone. So that will bring to the dish Serena Porter grounded out to third base her last time up. She swings and misses at the first offering from Jen Jones. 
Rayana Fortin also due up this inning. The 0 1. Swing on. This one's lined right back up the middle and through for a base hit. Fielded on the bounce by Whitney Bass. She gets it back in. And it's a one out single for Serena Porter. She reaches base for the first time today. Strong contact right there from Porter. Hitting just the edge of the bat, looking back at it. Being able, right in the zone where she likes it. Jones isn't able to react in time, forcing all the way out in the center field for best to have to deal with it. So Ryana Fortin, who singled her last time up back in the second inning, steps in. Linden with a chance to play the base runner for the first time today. Here's the pitch. This one's well on and fouled out of play behind the press box. That one's sent pretty deep backwards. That'll be strike number one on Fortin. Fortin back in. Jones sets, delivers. That one low. Ball number one. The count is even on a ball to strike. Vicky Valentine on deck. Struck out swinging her last time up. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Jones. This one swung on the ground and left side right into the glove of Door. She goes to second for one. Throw on the first, not in time for two, but the Eagles do get the lead runner. And that's going to be two away in this top half of the fourth. When Fortin reaches on the field of choice. Porter's put out five to four on the force out as Vicky Valentine steps in for the second time today. Struck out swinging back in the second inning. Here's the first offering from Jones. That one outside half, strike one. Going back on that last play, too. Windsor had a hard time getting that pivot to be quick. Chose to use the easy option. Here's the second offering from Jones. All one. This one's well popped up foul right side and out of play. And Valentine's quickly down a, is down a quick 0-2. Jones taking her time though, despite the rain, letting herself get all set up, not being rushed. So Valentine back in, Jones waits. The 0-2, swing on and this one's popped up right side, going back forward is Pomelo, she's got the grab and that retires the side. Lyndon leaves the base runner stranded. We head to the bottom half of the fourth. You're watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. We're really excited for our new School of Technology and Innovation to prepare students for the jobs that don't yet exist. There's a degree in integrated technology and an extended reality. And what's exciting about that is regardless of your perspective and your passion, there's space to explore that within our programs. Hassan cares about its students and Hassan cares about experiential learning and giving us those experiences to take into our future. Stand is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to send those old STEM theories flying past the neighbor's house into outer space. Dare to program something internet breaking, record breaking. Dare to blow their minds. Dare to learn the difference between sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Go find those rocks. Dare to keep daring. Dare to STEM. Check out She Can STEM to get started. Hudson University, preparing students for professional careers in business, criminal justice, health, technology, and communication since 1898. Hudson.edu. Back here from O'Keefe Field on the campus of Hudson University. Eagles with a 7-0 lead in this top in the, as they get ready to bat in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Alongside Alex Mooney, I meet the snow. Sam Tracy is coming inside out of the rain. And rightfully so, as the Eagles look to plate some more runs onto the board. They plated five in the second, two last inning in the third. And it'll be Kenzie Dorr leading things off for the Eagles in this bottom half of the fourth inning. Dorr, single and a triple this game. That triple brought home two runs back in the second inning. Taking on Sierra Anderson in the circle, the first offering in the dirt, ball one. It'll be Dorr, Whitney Best, Megan Gosland in the two, three, four spots all up this inning. As the rain continues to fall from O'Keefe Field, there's the 1-0. That one misses high and away, ball two to Dorr. Dorr very patient, 
Even though she is one of the better hitters in that knack, she does pick and choose when she wants to let it fly. So Anderson back in waiting for her sign. Doors got a 2-0 count. The bench. So on a grounded left side, fielded on the backhand by Porter. She throws on to first in time on the good pick from Rihanna Fortin. And that retires door. That's one gone in this bottom of the fourth. Great play right there. Great stretch, too, by Fortin. Being able to beat out door, even though she has that speed. And a good play on the backhand once again from Serena Porter. And a good pick made by Fortin at first. That sends up Whitney Best to the plate. With an, had an RBI single in the second, a fly out to left field in the first. Here's the first offering from Serena Anderson. And that one's in there on the outside half, strike one. For having the first time pitching, Anderson's been doing pretty well against this Eagles group. Sierra Anderson back in. Here's the 0-1. That one misses low, ball one. Whitney Best back in. One retired in this bottom half of the fourth inning. Game two on the Saturday afternoon. Here's the 1-1. One -one. It's way on a grounded foul left side. Best just getting a little too over that one right there from Anderson. She can lower it up, can level it out. The one ball, two strike count for Whitney Best. Nobody on base for Husson. One gone. Anderson back in, waits for her sign. Here's the one, two. That one misses high and away, and the count is even again at two balls and two strikes. Best back in. Eagles out hitting the Hornets in game two, eight to two. Here's the pitch. That one misses high, and the count is full at three balls and two strikes. Best back in. 3-2 count, nobody on, one gone for the Eagles. 3-2. Swung on and missed for strike number three. Anderson got her on the outside half. And that's two retired. Well, Anderson, you just said it perfectly. Anderson pushed the bait on that outside, made best chase. Best now pays. Megan Goslin back to the plate, was hit by a pitch in the first, popped out to first base in the second as she swings and lines this one. Nearly into the glove of Porter. She can't track it down. And Goslin is going to reach as Porter again on an attempt. Couldn't quite squeeze it into her glove. And Goslin reaches with two outs in this bottom half of the fourth. Porter, great attempt right there. Makes the dive just unable to keep it. Instead of getting into the mesh of the leather, hits it right into the palm. That one's got to stick. I'll score that a base hit for Goslin. We'll see what the official score ends up ruling it as, as Tori Excel steps in. She takes ball number one low. Excel, a warning track fly out to left field her first time up in the second inning and the ground out to third base her last time up in the third. Has a 1-0 count, two gone. The bitch, that one misses outside. 2-0 for Excel as the Myself and the official score concur. That'll be the ninth hit for Gos for the Eagles in game number two. First of this game for Goslin. 2-0 to Excel. Here's a throw out of first on in time. Now Excel has a 3-0 count. Two gone in this bottom half of the fourth inning. Excel is able to. The 3-0. That one misses high and away, and it's ball four to Tori Excel, and she reaches base for the first time today, and the Eagles have two on with two out. I'll tell you what, after watching Excel push that ball all the way to the warning track, she gets some more opportunities this year. Her slugging percentage will certainly rise. Kira McLeod steps to the plate for the second time today. She walked her only other time up back in the third and eventually scored on a wild pitch. Here's the first offering. Outside half, strike one to McLeod. Aaron Bonifant will step to the plate next if the inning were to continue. Anderson waits for her sign, has it. A one. So on and foul back to the screen. And the cloud is quickly down 0-2. Cloud two seeking her first hit of the season, potentially on this at bat. Coming into the weekend, McLeod only one previous at bat, and it was a strikeout. 
Anderson in, waits for her son. The 0-2. That one just missed outside. There's the ball and two strikes for McLeod. Smart play right there from McLeod. Not biting for the bait that was thrown wide out there. So a ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. That one misses high and away. And the count is two and two. McLeod fighting her way back into this battle. Bonifant on deck. Anderson waits for a sign. The 2 2. So on the ground to the left side. And that one's through for a base hit. Here comes Goslin from second base, and she's going to score. It's an 8 0 lead for the Eagles as Kira McLeod, on her first base hit of her career, brings home an RBI. And it's an 8 0 lead. And for her first base hit, that is a good one to have right there. Drives in an RBI as well. Gets it on that low inside, able to turn, hit it with a barrel. As Aaron Bonifant comes to the plate, five for five on the day in total. Came in with only a one base hit coming into today. And so far she's played, in f she's reached base five on base hits. And she takes ball one high and away. Bonifant two singles today and she has scored twice. Senior from Mount Vernon, Maine. Anderson in, 1-0. That one misses high and away, 2-0 to Bonifant. Bonifant's IQ too, you watch when she's in the box. She does not chase for much. She's very picky when it comes to what she's gonna swing for. So two on, two out for the Eagles. The 2-0 -oh count for Bonifant, here's the pitch. That one in the dirt. It'll be a 3-0 -oh count for Aaron Bonifant. And with the way she's been hitting today, she certainly loves having that hitter's count because that gives her free reign on this next one. So Bonifant back in. Anderson has her sign. The 3 0. That one all the way to the backstop on a wild pitch. It'll be ball four to Bonifant. And the Eagles have the bases loaded again as Bonifant reaches on the four pitch walk. McLeod, go, McLeod goes to second. Excel goes to third. And that brings up Madeline Fowler for the second time today. Singled and scored back in the second. Struck out looking in the third inning. She comes to the plate once again, a chance to extend this Eagles lead. Eagles already in that run rule. First pitch to Fowler's low, ball one. Fowler too, such a high energy player. You watch, you can almost see the eccentric coming right off her. Here's the 1-0 from Anderson. That one in the dirt again, 2-0. Fowler were to reach, that would bring up Jess Pomerlo once again. It would bring home more runs for the Eagles, already up 8-0. Leaves Linden in a must-score situation when they bat at the top of the fifth. Here's the pitch. Going on and grounded right back to Anderson. They'll go home and get the force out, and that retires the side. Eagles plate one more, last chance coming up for Linden. You are watching Hudson Eagles softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Thank you. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Well, coming up tomorrow in game number two of our Eagles softball weekend, we'll take a look at a special story that means so much more than softball. Look into a little bit more about Kenzie Dore. That'll be tomorrow between games when the Eagles take on Johnson. Back here from O'Keefe Field, Eagles 
with an eight nothing lead as they've gone to Jill Bisson into the circle to look to close things out. Bisson on the year in the circle. A game's one start, 2-0, and oh, nine innings pitch, 11 hits, five runs, two earned runs for a 1.45 ERA. She got the win against the Monks in game number two earlier on this week against uh, Wednesday. Here's the first offering. This one's why on the ground to the left side, fielded by Madeline Fowler, throw on to first in time. And that retires Lauren Siciliano and Linden down to their final two outs. And Jill, too, she comes in. She's got a 1.45 ERA. And she's a very well decorated on the mound. Jordan Adams now comes to the plate for the first time in game number two. Here's the first offering from Bisson. That one is low and off the catcher leg guard of Goslin. That'll be ball number one. I think that one dropped a little bit more, too, than Goslin thought. Back in is Adams. Fetch. That one in the dirt. Ball number two. Jill Bisson looking to make quick work of Linden, and the Eagles can go home with a sweep of the Hornets today and look at another doubleheader against the Badgers of Johnson tomorrow. 2-0. That one right down the middle, strike number one. Bisson trying to fight her way back in. It'll be Amber Everett and Blake Southworth also due up for Linden this inning. Need the play to run to keep the in game going. Here's the 2-1. That one low and inside. Three balls and a strike on the count. Linden being patient here, realizing that, hey, can't swing at everything. Got to make sure that Bisson ends up Throwing it into the zone. Cloud has her sign. No, excuse me, Bisson has her sign. Here's the 3-1. Swing on and miss. Strike two to Adams. And it's a full count. It's a good swing right there from Adams. Just a second too late. So Adams back in. Bisson has her sign. The 3-2. So I on and fouled off to the left side out of play. And we have a scoring update going on up in Orono where the Johnson Badgers are taking on the Umpy Owls. 16 to 10, Umpy leads the Badgers top of the seventh inning. They're playing a doubleheader up in Orono. Linden will head up there tomorrow. Johnson will come to Bangor tomorrow. Here's the three two and that one misses high and away. Ball four to Adams, and going off of that too real quick, Ethan. That is a heavy hitting game right there. That must be an offensive prowess. As Amber Everett steps in for the third time today, strikeout and a pop out to second. That was that diving play made by Megan Goslin a couple innings ago. Everett shows bunt. Here's the throw down to first, trying to get the runner, and they got her at, at second base. Lindem trying to advance the runner up to second and a great throw from Megan Goslin guns her down at second and that is two retired in this top of the fifth. Yeah, Goslin just throws a frozen rope. Fowler read it too. She started getting on the horse all ready for second, put the glove down, got Adams just in time. So just like that, Everett represents the last chance. Here's the all one Swayon on and grounded left side. Fowler takes it on the back end, throw down to first. That one gets away from Excel. And a good backup made by Pomelo keeps Everett at first. And another chance for Linden as they have the keep the game going run, so to say, at first base. They need the plate one here to extend the game into the bottom half of the fifth, at least try to get him to the sixth. That's pretty good safety right there from Pomelo too. Couldn't even see her from the angle that we were standing at. Totally bailed out the Eagles right there. So Blake Southworth, center fielder, steps in. A walk and a strikeout today. She takes ball one outside. Sierra Anderson would be up next. If the game were to continue. This is her sign, 1-0. Well, and this one's grounded right side in fair Tory. XL Field steps on first, and that ends the ball game. Eagles get another eight to nothing victory over the Linden Hornets.
And it is a opening, it is a opening conference day sweep for the Austin Eagles as they start the conference off 2-0 in the 2022 conference season. Linden starts off 0-2 and they fail to score a run and they and they smash a total of four hits combined on the day as both teams will meet, will shake hands as the Eagles will now look ahead to a double to a conference doubleheader to wrap up the weekend tomorrow afternoon versus Johnson. And uh, so the Eagles will enjoy this one real quick, but quickly got to look forward. Yeah, no, certainly Eagles, they will enjoy it. However, we know the mentality that this Eagles group has. Coach Diane Ramsey on to the next one. It's all right to enjoy for just a few moments, but in the grand scheme of things, she's not going to hold on to this one. It's always, it's on to the next day. It's on to the next day. And it's a 12 and six overall record for Hudson now as they get, once again, get a sweep over Linden, eight to nothing in both games today. They get a total of nine hits in game number two. For one final time, from Alex Mooney, Sam Tracy, down at field level, I'm Ethan Snow. A big shout out to our great crew here today, braving the elements. Special thanks to our director, Drew Hallett, producer Evan Cardimino, and the entire crew of this broadcast for making it possible. One final time from Alex Mooney, I'm Ethan Snow. Join us again tomorrow at noontime. This has been Hudson Eagles Softball on the Hudson Eagles Sports Network. Have a fantastic afternoon. Presentation of the New England School of Communications at Hudson University.